Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook, Marvel's Hogwarts Wizards. Chapter 1, New York, Queens, a yellow school bus full of elementary school students. Sitting in the last row, the handsome little boy with brown hair, watching the news report on the TV in front of the school bus, couldn't help but sigh a long time. Iron Man, I didn't expect that this is really the extremely dangerous Marvel movie world. I said why Captain America in elementary school textbooks looks so familiar. He has been living safely for 11 years. I almost thought something was wrong. It turned out that what was reported on TV at this time was the big news that Tony Stark, the chairman of Stark Industries, admitted in front of the media that he was Iron Man some time ago. The little boy's name is Jerry Carmen. He is 11 years old this year and is a primary school student who is about to enter junior high school. Of course, this is just his identity in this life. In fact, he is a time traveler. It has been 11 years since he passed away unexpectedly in his previous life and came to this world. Originally, he thought that he had just crossed over to a foreign country, but through various signs such as TV, textbooks, and some slightly deviated historical stories, it seemed that it was not as simple as he imagined. It wasn't until some time ago, when the famous Iron Man was reported on all the news, that he was completely sure that this was really the frightening Marvel movie world that was said to destroy half of the universe with a snap of his fingers. In fact, Jerry didn't know much about the Marvel series of movies in his previous life. At first, I watched the three Spider-Man films played by Maguire, but I heard from colleagues who were Marvel fans later that they were not quite the same as the Spider-Man in the Marvel series. However, he still watched the first part of Avengers, because when it was released, his colleague who was also a single dog was not accompanied by anyone, so he specially paid for it out of his own pocket to ask him to watch it with him. He thought that he would go without money anyway. Others are watching some clips while listening to a certain sound, or listening to some colleagues who are Marvel fans talking about some of them. For example, seven or eight years later, there will be a purple sweet potato spirit who snapped his fingers and wiped out half of the creatures in the entire universe including the earth. The ice and snow demon god dormant in a remote place of extreme cold, come here at my call. Oh black blizzard that freezes everything. Turn everything into white snow, frozen formation. Just when Jerry was deep in thought, thinking about the future, a majestic but immature voice suddenly rang in his ears. Turning his head away, suddenly a bunch of bubbles hit his face. Aisha, as I said, you can't play with bubble wands in the school bus, otherwise the teacher will be upset. Jerry looked at the blonde girl sitting inside holding a magic bubble wand and shooting bubbles at him, with a look of helplessness on his face. HMPH, you demon Jerry from the abyss, let me, the Ice Queen Elsa, finish you off. Frozen waves of ice. The little blonde girl was not moved by Jerry's words at all, but took the magic bubble wand and continued to shoot bubbles at Jerry. How can the beautiful ice and snow queen succumb to the devil? Three, humph. The blonde girl sitting next to Jerry is called Aisha Hathaway, 10 years old this year, and she is Jerry's younger sister in this life. Since I was a child, I have loved watching animations related to magic, and I often imagined myself as a magic princess or queen. In Jerry's words, it's just a bit of a second disease. However, Jerry also felt that there was nothing wrong with it. As a child, when he was his age in his previous life, he would often hold a branch as a sword and play Dugu Nine Swords on the dirt road after school. He even once flaunted a small piece of rapeseed field of a neighbor in the village, and was chased by his mother for three miles with a broom. Sometimes when I think about the embarrassing things I did when I was a child, it is also embarrassing to be able to find a two-bedroom and one living room. Ha ha ha, since you have discovered it, then I will not hide it. I am the demon Lord Jerry from the Abyss, Ice Queen Aisha, take my move, the Dark Claw of Death. Seeing that normal speaking could not handle his younger sister, Jerry had no choice but to join in. While tickling the little girl, while she was giggling, he secretly snatched her magic bubble wand and stuffed it into his school bag. Stab. Suddenly, the school bus slammed on the brakes, and the strong inertia made Jerry, who was playing with his sister, almost thrown out of his seat. Fortunately, he reacted quickly enough, while firmly grasping the handle next to him to stabilize his body, he hugged his sister who was also about to be thrown out. However, the other children were not so good. 
Many of them either fell out of their seats, or their heads hit the window glass due to inertia, and they burst into tears. Mr. Paul, what's going on? Teacher Bei Li, who was in charge of escorting them in the school bus, quickly got up and helped the crying children back to their seats and comforted them. Seeing this, Jerry also told his sister to go down to help. A car suddenly blocked the way, and I almost hit it. Paul, the middle-aged man driving the school bus, replied angrily. Bang, 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 bang. At this moment, several gunshots were heard from the door of the school bus, and then the door was forcibly kicked open several times. Don't move around, be honest, or don't blame me for blowing your heads. A muscular muscular man wearing a mask, nearly two meters tall, broke into the school bus with a rifle and shouted sharply. Then, three more men wearing masks and holding weapons walked in, but they were still carrying three large bags full of them. No way, such bad luck. The moment Jerry heard the gunshot, he had a premonition that something was wrong, and immediately returned to his seat to protect his sister inside. Sure enough, the next scene fulfilled his bad expectations. Drive away from here and go to the suburbs, or I'll blow your head off. The strong man put the rifle in his hand on the head of the driver Paul, and ordered fiercely. Okay, I'll be right away. Having been held to the head with a gun by a strong man, Paul dared not obey. He immediately started the school bus, reversed the car, turned around and drove towards the suburbs. At this time, the siren of a police car behind him also came. This is a school bus, they dare not fight back, you two opened the windows at the back and hit me hard. A masked man who followed the strong man into the bus pointed a weapon at Bell, the only teacher on the school bus, and gave instructions to the other two. The other two masked men nodded when they heard the words, and when they came to the back and opened the glass window, they turned on the crazy output mode for the police cars that were chasing them. Jerry put his arms around his sister Aisha, and leaned against the back seat. Hearing the roar of the guns next to him and the excited growls of the two masked men, his heart was pounding nervously. Although he had practiced martial arts for several years because of his hobbies in his previous life, it would be no problem to beat up two or three gangsters. In this life, he has paid great attention to exercising his body since he was a child, and almost no one of his age is his opponent. But after all, he has just turned 11 years old this year, and his physical fitness is not at the same level as these robbers. There is a good saying, if you talk about fighting without physical fitness, you are considered a hooligan. What's more, each of these robbers had guns in their hands. Demon Lord Jerry, are those your demons? Give me back my wand quickly, and let me, Ice Queen Elsa, punish them with magic. Aisha, who was protected by Jerry, stretched out her little head excitedly, and began to touch the direction of Jerry's school bag with her little hand. I said sister, you are a real tiger. Without saying a word, Jerry pressed Aisha's little head down again. Looking at the situation, it's hard to count on the police. You have to rely on yourself. Listening to the gradually decreasing and distant sirens, Jerry couldn't help sighing, and then his eyes narrowed, and a virtual panel appeared in front of him. Because some content has been slightly modified, some comments may disappear. This strange virtual panel appeared inexplicably on the first day he was reborn in this world. And only he can see it. After so many years of research and the introduction on the panel, he has almost figured out the general purpose of this panel. First of all, as long as he does good deeds, this panel will accumulate little red stars for him, and when the little red stars accumulate to 5,000, they can be exchanged for special wizard blood for him, and then send him to the parallel world to learn magic. And according to the introduction on the panel, when he went to the parallel world to learn magic, the time of the main world he was in would also enter a static state. For so many years, Jerry has been working hard to do some good things within his ability, such as helping the grandmother cross the road, helping neighbors with disabilities to take out the trash, beating up classmates who like to bully others, and volunteering to take on some housework and so on. In addition, because of the soul of an adult, his studies in school are naturally among the best. Therefore, no matter in the eyes of relatives at home, neighbors, or teachers at school, he is a very exemplary good boy, and he is also a child of other people's family. And he also found that although this panel will reward Little Red Star for doing good deeds, but if he does bad things, there is no punishment. 
For example, stealing things, snatching children's lollipops, etc., the panel will not deduct his little red star because of this. 6000. Looking at the number of little red stars he had accumulated on the panel at this time, Jerry took a deep breath and then clicked the exchange button next to it. In fact, as early as half a year ago, he had already accumulated enough little red stars, which could be exchanged for wizard blood and enter the parallel small world. But he has been hesitating whether to exchange it. Because it was written on the panel that if he died in the parallel world, he would also die in the main world, and if he was injured in the parallel world, his body would still be injured after returning. Although the family he belongs to now is not rich, it is also considered a petty bourgeoisie. In addition, he can be regarded as living a new life, study hard, and his living standard in the future will not be too bad. Is it really necessary to take risks in an unknown wizarding world? Compared with thrilling adventures, Jerry actually prefers a peaceful and peaceful life in his heart. His dream in his previous life was to have a car and a house, to have a gentle and considerate wife, to eat hot food after get off work, and to travel with his wife and children during the holidays. And, happy family. It's a pity that those things are not easy for a child from the countryside. He didn't save enough money for the down payment until his unexpected death in his previous life. But now, he has determined that the world he is in is the dangerous Marvel world. And the roar of the submachine gun next to him made him understand that if he didn't have some power of his own, then he and his family in this life would be really insecure. Although Jerry likes a peaceful life, it doesn't mean he is bloodless. Confirm the exchange of wizard blood, and start implanting. Implanted successfully, start extracting parallel small worlds. Successfully extracted the parallel small world of Harry Potter, and began to implant identity. Identity implantation is successful, start to enter. The experience time of entering the small world for the first time is one month. If you need to continue to experience in the future, please use the little red star to exchange time. As lines of words appeared on the panel, Jerry found that the world he was in seemed to have entered a static state in an instant, and his eyes were darkened, and he gradually lost consciousness. 1991, August 1st. In an orphanage in the small town of Winton, Surrey, London, a little brown-haired boy slowly sat up from the bed. I didn't expect it to be the world of Harry Potter. Fortunately, I have seen all the movies in this series. The little boy rubbed his dizzy temples and let out a long breath of relief. Originally, he thought he would go to a strange magical world, but he didn't expect it to be the world of Harry Potter, which made Jerry feel a little more happy. Although due to the long time, his memory of many details has been blurred, but he still has an impression of the general plot direction. In this world, as long as he stayed away from the Iron Boys trio, at least until Voldemort was resurrected, he was still very safe. And Voldemort's resurrection should be four or five years away from this time. Feeling that his head was not so dizzy, Jerry began to sort out some information about his identity in this world that was instilled in his mind. He is also called Jerry Carmen in this world, but he has no family and is an orphan called Edward Orphanage. Some other information is a brief introduction about the orphanage staff and some orphans, and then there is no more. Let's familiarize ourselves with the environment first. After putting on his shoes and clothes, Jerry was about to open the door and leave the room when there was a ding-ding knocking on the glass at the window. Turning his head, he saw a gray long-eared owl with a letter in its mouth, tapping its claws on the closed window. Could it be that it's here so soon? Jerry quickly turned around and came to the window, opened the window and let the owl in. The owl flew into the house, put the envelope on the table, and hooted at Jerry, as if asking for something to eat. Jerry looked around, then took out his pocket, shrugged at the owl, and showed an awkward but polite smile. Seeing this, the owl hooted again towards Jerry, as if to say, bad luck, then spread its wings and flew away from the window. This, unexpectedly, on the first day after coming here, I was despised by an owl. Shaking his head helplessly, Jerry stepped forward and picked up the letter lying on the table. The material of the envelope is not ordinary double adhesive paper, but made of relatively retro parchment paper. On the front of the envelope are a few lines written in a strange emerald green color. Recipient, Jerry Kamen. Address, Mr. Jerry Kamen, on the second floor of Edward Orphanage, Winton Township, Surrey. 
Open the back again, and a familiar wax seal is on it. There is a pattern on the top of the wax seal, with a large letter, H, in the middle, surrounded by a lion, an eagle, a badger and a snake around the letter. When the envelope was opened, two pieces of parchment were revealed. One was written on the first year Hogwarts freshman, all the books, necessities and precautions that needed to be purchased. The other one is relative to the official Hogwarts acceptance letter. Headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Albus Dumbledore. President of the International Federation of Wizards, First Class Great Magician of Sir Merlin, Chief Magician of Wizangamot. Dear Mr. Jerry Kamen, we are pleased to inform you that you have been admitted to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Witchcraft and Wizardry. Enclosed is a list of required books and equipment. The semester is scheduled to start on September 1st, and I will visit the Edward Orphanage in person at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning and get your reply letter back. Vice Chancellor. Sincerely, Minerva McGonagall. Putting away the acceptance letter from Hogwarts, Jerry muttered to himself. All right, if you start early, you will be able to go to Diagon Alley to buy magic books and learn magic earlier, so that when you go back a month later, you will be able to deal with those robbers with guns. The next day, Jerry got up early when he knew that Professor McGonagall was coming to visit. After receiving the Hogwarts admission letter yesterday, he took a rough tour of the entire orphanage. According to the information provided in his mind, this orphanage named Edward was established by a businessman named Edward 20 years ago before his death. The original intention of the building was to rescue those poor orphans who were abandoned for various reasons. Unfortunately, after the old man died, things changed a little. However, it's not particularly bad, it's just that the meals and treatment of the orphans have been reduced a lot, and the staff of the orphanage are not as friendly as before. Jerry felt that this was also human nature. In this day and age, there is no child abuse in places like orphanages, which is considered pretty good. After all, some orphanages are orphanages in name, but behind the scenes, they don't know what they are illegal institutions. There is a saying, the prosperity of the world is for profit, and the chaos of the world is for profit. No one is absolutely selfless except the great saints. He himself is not like this, except for those he cares about. If there is no certain benefit, he will not do some thankless things. Before, he had been working hard to do good deeds and actively help others. His original intention was only for Little Red Star. If there is no Little Red Star, presumably he will not take the initiative to help those strangers who do not know. When he was going to school, if he saw someone fall down on the road, he would step forward to help him. A few years after he came out to work, when he saw someone fall, he would only choose to take a detour. After all, the price of going forward may be his salary for a year of hard work. But to live this life again, to be honest, the many good people and good deeds he did because he wanted to earn a little red star did have some impact on him. Because he found that when he was truly appreciated by others, it did make him feel some happiness inexplicably, although he didn't want to admit it. After queuing up for a simple breakfast, Jerry came to the large yard at the front door of the orphanage. He remembered that Professor McGonagall was Annie Magus, who liked to turn into a tabby cat when he went out to the muggle world so he guarded in the front yard, maybe he could see the miraculous scene of a cat turning into a human in a while. Half an hour later, Jerry, who was hiding in a corner and watching for cats on the surrounding walls, frowned and looked towards the right side of the large yard. There, three teenagers around the age of 13 or 14 were laughing and pushing an 8 or 9 year old boy to the ground, laughing at him non-stop. Through memory, Jerry knows that these three 13 year old boys are the three oldest children in this orphanage. Their favorite thing is to bully the younger orphans by relying on their physical strength. If there is any orphan who is unwilling to listen to them, then I am afraid that they will be bullied by them for a long time, and even fight with each other. So the children in the orphanage were very afraid of these three boys. At this time, when they saw the little boy being pushed and laughed at, they didn't dare to stop them at all. In fact, there were also victims before, who told the staff of the orphanage about this situation, but the staff did not take it seriously, they just warned the three of them verbally, but the victim who made a small report was retaliated by the three teenagers for a long time. For the staff of these orphanages, as long as the orphans did not suffer any serious injuries, they basically didn't care about anything. 
Fighting among children was not a big deal in their opinion. As for the little boy who was beaten now, he was transferred to the orphanage only recently, so he was targeted by these three teenagers. After thinking about it for a while, Jerry didn't step forward. He felt that even if he went to help the boy now, the little boy would still be bullied when he left the orphanage and went to Hogwarts. Besides, there is no benefit. When the time comes to fight, the visiting Professor McGonagall may have a bad impression after seeing it. However, when he heard the arrogant laughter of the three teenagers, and that the boy was surrounded because of his stubbornness, he might be about to suffer a meal, so he finally stood up with a sigh. I'm not soft-hearted, I just want to test it out. If you do good deeds in this world, you can also get Little Red Star. Yes, this is just a necessary experiment. After underestimating a few words, Jerry stepped forward quickly and shouted. Stop. Following Jerry's voice, the three teenagers stopped involuntarily, then turned to look at Jerry who was walking, showing a surprised look. They didn't expect that among the children in the orphanage, there would be someone who dared to yell at them, especially the usually taciturn Jerry. Looks like you want to be like this new kid too. The three temporarily let go of the little boy whose eyes were already tearing up, and walked up to Jerry with malicious intentions. It is understandable for the newcomers to be disobedient, but if someone like Jerry who has been in the orphanage for five or six years dares to resist them, then he must be punished severely. Otherwise, how can they deter other orphans? Everyone is an orphan, it's not easy, why do such a thing? Looking at the three teenagers who were a full head taller than himself, Jerry said lightly. Except for a few children who grow up in orphanages, most of them will have some psychological problems. Those who just feel inferior are nothing, they are afraid of this kind of psychological inferiority, but they want to gain a sense of accomplishment through abuse and bullying, other people who are weaker than themselves. Wrong, in my eyes, you are all just rubbish, making you happy is your greatest role. Among the three teenagers, the fattest and tallest one looked around and then gave a mocking look. Although I don't want to bully children, but if I don't teach you a lesson, you may have trouble in the future. At this time, Jerry also figured it out. He had to stay in the orphanage for a month before school started. With the personalities of these three people, even without today's incident, they would still have conflicts with him sooner or later. That being the case, it is better to subdue them at once, which can be regarded as saving some troubles in the future. Shaking his head, Jerry took off his coat and t-shirt casually, and put them on the table beside him, revealing a lean body. Although Jerry was only 11 years old at this time, and his height was less than 1.4 meters, his muscles were very strong. And it's not the kind of big muscles trained by fitness experts, but the kind of small muscle groups that are like steel bars. So this also makes him look a little thin when he puts on his clothes, but he looks like a different person after taking off his clothes. Who could say no to a boy with eight-pack abs? Without the delay of work and the trouble of going to school, he really has a lot of time to exercise in this life. In fact, he has always been interested in martial arts in his previous life. When he was a child, he could play with a stick for a long time, and he thought he was a peerless master. When I was a little older, I fell in love with Jeet Kune Do again because I watched Bruce Lee's movies. I even used my pocket money to buy a Jeet Kune Do manual to practice secretly. When I was in college, I even joined the martial arts club, and got some relatively orthodox guidance, and even participated in competitions on behalf of the club and won awards. It's just that after graduation, I was too busy with work, so it was abandoned. After being reborn in this life, Without the pressure of life, he began to exercise his body early on, and only then did he have the lean muscles he has now. Although he couldn't deal with the burly gun-wielding robbers in the school bus, he couldn't deal with these 13 or 14-year-old boys. Moreover, since he was fused with the blood of the wizard, he felt that his body seemed to have undergone some wonderful changes. It doesn't mean that the strength has become stronger or the speed has become faster, but a feeling that the essence of life has been sublimated. Also, although the physical strength of wizards is not much stronger than that of ordinary people, they are very durable. Missing arms and legs often happen, as long as they don't die immediately, they can persist until they can be reconnected with magic and potions. Oh, what is this idiot doing? Does he think he can beat us with his clothes off? The leading fat boy laughed. 
I feel that his small body wants to have a close contact with my fist. Another boy flashed his sandbag-sized fist maliciously, and then punched Jerry in the stomach. Obviously, at this age they still don't understand what it means to be a boy with eight-pack abs. The fourth form of golden dragon fist, Xiaolong asks the way. Jerry retreated with a sliding step to avoid the attack, and then kicked the boy's waist as fast as lightning. It turned out that with just one kick, he fell to the ground. The dragon wags its tail. After kicking, he didn't stop at all, followed by a coherent swing of his legs, slamming on the face of the boy on the other side who hadn't reacted yet, and quickly knocked down one again. Although Jerry is only 11 years old, his muscles and strength are much stronger than those of the 13 or 14 year old boys in front of him. In addition, he has practiced Jeet Kune Do hard these years, and he is already familiar with many moves. He is even better than when he was playing in universities in the world. These few teenagers who only bully the weak all day long are naturally not opponents. Seeing the two younger brothers screaming and falling to the ground, the fat boy in the lead roared and ran towards Jerry. He is a head taller than Jerry, and his body is more than twice as big as Jerry. He believes that as long as he bumps into the opponent, and then there is another overwhelming pressure, the opponent will never move. Too naive. Facing the leading fat boy who bumped into him, Jerry sneered, and instead of dodging, he sneaked forward, cut into the middle line of the fat boy, took a deep breath, kicked his right foot on the ground, twisted his waist, extended his hips, and shoved his shoulders, punch. Inch punch. A powerful force exploded in an instant, directly hitting the fat boy's abdomen, knocking him backwards two meters away and sitting on the ground. Seeing the orphanage trio screaming and screaming on the ground after being hit by Jerry three times, the other orphans who were watching were stunned. They didn't expect that the usually scary trio would have such a situation today, and they didn't expect the usually taciturn Jerry to be so powerful. What are you waiting for? Revenge for those who have hatred, revenge for those who have resentment. Picking up the clothes and putting them on again, Jerry reminded the other orphans who were still in a daze. I just took off my clothes just because I was worried about not getting dirty. After all, Professor McGonagall will come to visit my home later, so I can't get all dusty. It's just that he somewhat overestimated the three teenagers. The three teenagers who rely on bullying the weak to gain pleasure and inner comfort don't have any bloodliness, just hit him once, and they are so painful on the ground that they dare not fight him again. In fact, if the three teenagers were more bloody, enduring the pain and working together to besiege him, it would really cost him some hands and feet. Hearing Jerry's reminder, those orphans who were used to being bullied suddenly had their eyes lit up. After looking at each other, they began to cautiously approach the three wailing teenagers on the ground, and then. Looking at the three teenagers who were beaten and kicked by the orphans, Jerry couldn't help sighing. Unity is strength. Jerry held back a little bit of strength when he shot just now. With the obese bodies of the three teenagers, there shouldn't be any serious problems at this time. But facing the beatings of dozens of orphans, they were no match at all, and they were beaten all over their heads very quickly. Two or three orphans are definitely no match for the three teenagers, but if there are dozens of orphans together, even if the three teenagers are older and better equipped, they will definitely be no match for them. Once the fear in your heart is broken, you will find that the guy who is so tall and invincible is actually nothing. When Jerry knocked down the trio in the orphanage, most of the orphans, fear of the trio was eliminated. Now after this round of beatings, I believe that even if Jerry is not in the orphanage, they will no longer be afraid of the trio. There are really little red stars in the money. After getting dressed, Jerry opened the panel and was a little surprised to see that the number of little red stars on the panel changed from 1000 after crossing to 1005. Originally, he thought that the little red star could only be obtained in the main world, but he didn't expect to be able to get it after entering the small world. In this way, it would be quite good, at least there is another world to get the little red star. After closing the panel, when Jerry looked towards the school gate again, he found a tabby cat, who had already stood on the top of the wall at some point, poking his head to observe something. A, this one can't be changed by Professor McGonagall. Jerry turned his head away pretending to be calm, then rolled his eyes, and shouted at the orphans. Okay, you can stop. When the orphans heard the words, they immediately stopped beating the three teenagers. Facing Jerry, 
who had easily defeated the three teenagers just now, they were still very convinced. Ahem, I, Jerry Carmen, am a person who hates violence very much. I hope that we orphans who are suffering from the same disease can continue to strive for self-improvement, help each other in friendship, and work together. In the future, we will be useful talents to society, and we will shine a bright light on the future. A thousand points of light. When the orphans heard the words, although they didn't quite understand, they still applauded very applaudingly. Jerry nodded, and then said to the three teenagers with bruised noses and swollen faces. Before, you took advantage of your age to do evil in the orphanage and bully other younger orphans. Today is a lesson for you. We are all orphans, as long as you know your mistakes and correct them, everyone will accept you in the future, don't you agree? Quote. Seeing Jerry's dangerous eyes, the three teenagers with bruised noses and swollen faces didn't dare to neglect, and hurriedly replied. Ah, that's right. In the room of the orphanage, Jerry recalled the words he said in the yard before, and felt that Professor McGonagall should not have a bad impression. Although he shot and beat up several teenagers, he also explained the reason just now, which can be regarded as an act of righteousness. Clang, 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 coming. Jerry's eyes lit up when he heard the knock on the door, and he got up and opened the door immediately. It was the current director of the Edward Orphanage who knocked on the door, and beside him stood a lady in her fifties or sixties wearing square glasses, a Scottish shirt and a green robe. Mrs. McGonagall, this is the Jerry Carmen you're looking for. The dean's tone revealed respect, but Jerry saw a trace of fear from his expression. Apparently, after Professor McGonagall came to the orphanage, he first explained the reason to the director of the orphanage and showed off his ability as a wizard. Okay, Dean Bryan, please lead the way. Next, I want to talk to Mr. Carmen alone. No problem, then I'll go first. The dean nodded quickly and left the room in a hurry. Hello, Mr. Carmen. Professor McGonagall closed the door and walked into the room, first greeting Jerry. Jerry looked at Professor McGonagall and asked politely. Hi, may I ask who you are? I'm the vice principal of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Witchcraft and your future transfiguration teacher. You can call me Professor McGonagall. Professor McGonagall explained. Jerry immediately pretended to be enlightened. It turns out that you wrote the letter sent by the owl yesterday, but, does magic really exist in this world? And where is Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry? Little wizards who grew up in a muggle environment will have similar doubts when they receive the admission notice. McGonagall was already used to this, and knew how to quickly gain the little wizard's trust. Flavov. She drew out her wand, pointed at the cup on the table in the room, and a ray of magic light shot out, and the cup immediately turned into a fat big orange cat. Magic has always existed. When you were growing up, you should have had some incredible experiences. Those are the powers that originate from the blood in your body. And Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry is a school that teaches you how to learn and control magic. Watching Professor McGonagall's demonstration of magic, Jerry couldn't help but widen his eyes. Although he had watched movies on TV in his previous life, when he saw a person waving his hand and turning a cup into a cat, the effect was completely different. Turning non-living substances into living substances in an instant, Jerry thinks, this is indeed very magical. 20 minutes later. That's about it. Is there anything else you want to ask? Seeing that Jerry believed her completely, McGonagall asked finally. Professor, although I really want to go to Hogwarts to study magic, you should know that I don't have the ability to pay the tuition. Jerry thought for a while and asked his own question. He remembered that the little wizard born in a muggle family in the movie could exchange muggle coins to Gringotts for galleons, but he guessed that the orphanage he was in would not be willing to give him money to go to Hogwarts go to school. Professor McGonagall showed a smile on his face. You don't have to worry about this, the school will provide you with a bursary for your normal studies, and you can pay it off after you graduate and work. Okay, then I have no problem. Jerry nodded. Professor McGonagall had already explained the general situation. He understood some key things because of his memory, so he understood them quickly. Very good, Mr. Carmen, it seems that you are not only very brave, but also have a strong understanding ability. Professor McGonagall looked at Jerry, who was very calm, with a look of satisfaction in his eyes. On the fence of the orphanage before, Professor McGonagall witnessed the whole process of the bullying incident in the yard. 
And Jerry's performance at that time also made her look a little different. She felt that the bravery and responsibility shown by the 11 year old child at that time, as well as the positive spirit in his words, were not possessed by many adult wizards today. If you use one sentence to summarize Professor McGonagall's views on Jerry at this time, it is. This son will become a great weapon in the future. Okay, since you already understand and are willing to study magic at Hogwarts, today I will take you to Diagon Alley and buy all the things you need to start school. Professor McGonagall took out his pocket watch, checked the time, and stood up from his seat. Diagon Alley. Jerry had a surprised look on his face. It's not that he doesn't know what Diagon Alley does, it's just that he didn't expect Professor McGonagall to take him to buy school supplies after his home visit. But after thinking about it for a while, he understood again. A young wizard from a normal wizarding family definitely does not need to be taken to Diagon Alley by a Hogwarts teacher. And little wizards in muggle families also have parents, so as long as they make it clear to their parents, there is naturally no problem. Every time Hermione went to Diagon Alley to buy school supplies, her parents accompanied her there. And he is now an orphan. If Professor McGonagall doesn't take him to Diagon Alley, who will take him? It would be unreliable to expect the director of the orphanage to be an employee. That's a street that sells wizard items. You need to go there to buy all the items you need to go to school. Professor McGonagall thought that Jerry didn't know what Diagon Alley was, so he explained it a little. Then how do we get there, by train? Jerry remembered that Diagon Alley seemed to be somewhere in the city of London, and the small town of Winton where he was located was not that close to the city of London. No, grab my arm, it may feel uncomfortable for a while, you need to be patient. McGonagall offered Jerry an arm without much explanation. Could it be? Jerry's heart skipped a beat, and he immediately thought of something. Sure enough, when Jerry grabbed Professor McGonagall's arm, he saw Professor McGonagall take out his wand again and whispered. The follower appears. Suddenly, Jerry only felt that Professor McGonagall's arm seemed to break free from his own, so he quickly grabbed it tightly. After a crackling sound like firecrackers, Jerry's surroundings instantly became pitch black, followed by strong squeezes from all directions. I couldn't breathe at all, and my chest seemed to be tightly strangled by several iron hoops. His eyeballs were pushed back into his head, and his eardrums were pushed deep into his skull. This feeling is like being squeezed out of a very narrow rubber tube. As if after a long time, and as if only for a moment, light appeared in his eyes again. Taking a few deep breaths to ease the dizziness in his brain, he turned his head and looked around. He and Professor McGonagall were no longer in the room of the orphanage, but appeared on a street. Are you okay? Professor McGonagall asked with some concern. Jerry smiled and waved his hands. I'm fine, just a little dizzy, where is it? He knew that what Professor McGonagall just cast should be the advanced magic that only adult wizards can learn, apparition, apparition, and its branch follower appearance. Apparition, apparition, is simply teleportation. As long as it is a place you have been to, you can teleport it in your mind. It is one of the ways wizards travel. However, it is not an easy task to learn apparition. Many adult wizards cannot perform apparition perfectly, and one might be torn apart by the power of space. Moreover, the apparition distance is also related to the magic power in the wizard's body and the proficiency of this magic. Some wizards may only apparate for hundreds of kilometers, while some can apparate directly from one city to another. Professor McGonagall obviously belongs to the latter, but she also used the apparition she just used at the same time as the follower apparition, not only can teleport directly, but also teleport people. It's just that Jerry thought that Professor McGonagall would take him directly to Diagon Alley, but now it seems that he appeared on a Muggle Street. Charing Cross Street, London, this is an entrance from Muggle Street to Diagon Alley. You have to remember the name and location of this street, because next time you come to Diagon Alley, you need to come here by yourself. It turns out that in the eyes of Professor McGonagall, Jerry is a child who knows nothing about the wizarding world, so it is natural to take him to experience the process of a normal wizard entering Diagon Alley, so that he can enter Diagon Alley independently in the future. Look at that bar over there, it's the entrance to Diagon Alley. Following the direction of Professor McGonagall's finger, Jerry's gaze crossed a luxury movie theater, 
a popular hamburger restaurant, and finally settled in the middle of a large bookstore and a record store on the other side. It was a very dirty and small bar, with only an old wooden door and a cracked sign hanging on the door, with a few words written crookedly on the sign, Leaky Cauldron. Although this small bar, located in the middle of a clean and tidy bookstore and record company, seems very abrupt. But all the pedestrians passing by turned a blind eye to it, as if they couldn't see it at all. Jerry knew that ordinary muggles really couldn't see this small bar, because it was cast by wizards to repel muggles, a spell that made muggles without wizard blood unable to detect and approach it. Jingle. As the bell rang when the wooden door was pushed open, Jerry was pulled by Professor McGonagall into the leaky cauldron. The interior of the bar was very dark, and there were not many customers. After a quick glance, only seven or eight wizards in wizard robes were drinking and chatting. When the bell rang, all the wizards in the bar turned their gazes over. When they saw that it was Professor McGonagall, they all nodded politely. As the Vice Principal of Hogwarts and the Dean of Gryffindor College, Professor McGonagall is quite well known in the entire wizarding world, and many wizards nowadays can actually be regarded as her students. Jerry remembers that when he watched, Where Are the Fantastic Beasts? In his previous life, in Newt's memory, Professor McGonagall was already a teacher at Hogwarts at that time. In other words, Professor McGonagall has been a teacher at Hogwarts for at least 50 years, and he has taught countless students. Oh, it's Professor McGonagall, do you need a drink? At this time, an old wizard with nearly stripped hair and a blunted walnut-like appearance on the counter greeted Professor McGonagall with a smile. No, Tom, I'm sending freshmen to Diagon Alley. Professor McGonagall waved his hand and refused. Since her husband Elphinstone died unexpectedly due to poisonous tentacle bites, she hardly ever leaves Hogwarts, let alone stay outside Hogwarts, except for the annual home visits before school starts. This guy shouldn't be too young. As Jerry followed Professor McGonagall through the bar to the backyard, he glanced at Tom, the bar owner just now, and thought to himself. He remembered in the movie that when Voldemort entered school, this guy was already the owner of the Leaky Cauldron, and he had the same name as Voldemort, both named Tom. The backyard of the Leaky Cauldron, under the green brick wall next to the trash can. Professor McGonagall tapped his wand on the wall three times and explained to Jerry. Look, just like this, count three blocks above the trash can, count two blocks to the left, then tap three times with your wand, and the entrance to Diagon Alley appears. As Professor McGonagall withdrew his wand, the knocked blue brick suddenly trembled, and the whole wall started to reorganize rapidly following the shaking of the blue brick, as if some mechanism had been triggered. Soon, a small hole appeared in the middle of the blue brick wall, and then the hole became bigger and bigger. Before long, there appeared in front of them an archway wide enough for four or five people to pass at the same time, and the archway led to a winding cobbled street with no end in sight. It is the shopping mecca for wizards in London, Diagon Alley. Following Professor McGonagall across the archway and into Diagon Alley, Jerry couldn't help feeling a little more excited. The scenes in the movie were reflected in reality, even though he was mentally prepared, his eyes widened because of the magical scene in front of him. It's different from ordinary people who wear cool summer clothes outside, dress stylishly, and carry bags. Almost most of the street is full of wizards wearing wizard robes of various colors and holding wands in their hands. Of course, there are various wizarding pets, as well as individual house elves and goblins. Copper, brass, pewter, silver crucibles, complete models, automatic stirring, foldable, retractable, come in and have a look. Gray forest owl, Mingjiao owl, grass owl, brown owl, snow owl, there are all kinds of owls. The latest Nimbus 2000, the fastest broom, you deserve it. Dragon liver, bat spleen, eel eyeball, spell book, quill pen, parchment, medicine bottle, moon globe, the price is cheap. In front of the shops on both sides of the street, all kinds of small advertising signs were hung, and many excited little wizards were also crowded. Have you brought your letter? When he came to a shop called Partridge's Crucible, McGonagall looked down at the dazzled Jerry who was already watching. Carry. Jerry pulled out the parchment envelope he had received yesterday from his pocket and gave Professor McGonagall a nod. Professor McGonagall nodded. Okay, take out a list of essential supplies inside, and I'll take you to buy them one by one. 
Hearing this, Jerry took out the second page of letter paper from the envelope, unfolded it and read it. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Essential Supplies. 1. Uniform. 2. Textbooks. 3. Other Equipment. 4. Description of Pets. Parents are especially reminded that first-year freshmen are not allowed to bring their own broomsticks. The Hogwarts stipend is 100 galleons per year, and there is no need to go to Gringotts to pick it up. Professor McGonagall has already brought it during his home visit. There are three main currencies in the wizarding world, galleons, sickles and nuts. One gold galleon is equal to 17 silver sickles, and one silver sickle is equal to 29 copper nats bad math means big head. There are a lot of things, Mr. Carmen, we may need to buy a big box first, and a small cart. Professor McGonagall pulled Jerry, who was looking around, through the dense crowd, and soon came to a shop selling sundries. In this store, Jerry bought a super large suitcase, a small cart, a set of glass or crystal vials, a telescope and a brass scale. Then they went to a crucible shop with a shiny, partage, sign and bought a crucible, pewter, standard size too. What pet do you want, an owl, a cat or a toad? After coming out of the crucible store, Professor McGonagall looked at the L Owl store next to him and asked Jerry. Pet. Jerry had a thoughtful look on his face. In fact, Jerry really has no idea about keeping pets. After all, he didn't have the habit of keeping pets in his previous life. Little wizards now like owls, because they can help deliver letters and gifts, and they are relatively more practical. Professor McGonagall thought that Jerry didn't know much about pets, so he recommended the most popular pets at Hogwarts. Owl. Forget it, it's still a cat, I like cats better. Owls are indeed very practical for little wizards. They can help deliver letters and gifts. Relatively speaking, cats and toads seem to have no role other than eating. But Jerry knew that in a pet treatment shop in Diagon Alley, there was a cat with the blood of a cat named Crookshanks. It is the smartest cat evaluated by Sirius. Not only can it quickly detect corrupt or suspicious people, but it can also distinguish any magus who has turned into an animal form. Also, it is able to solve some problems on its own without help or guidance. As a person with secrets, Jerry felt that if he had to keep a pet, it would be nice to have such a cat. The point is, with Crookshanks present, Ron's mouse, Scabber, which was transformed from Peter Pettigrew, should not dare to approach him again. As for owls, there are public owls in the school that can be used. It doesn't cost money, so why raise one yourself? And there is also an owl post office outside. Cats. Few little wizards buy cats as pets now. Professor McGonagall was a little surprised when he heard Jerry's answer, but there was a smile on his face. As an Annie Magus turned tabby wizard, Professor McGonagall certainly has a fondness for cats. It's just that it's popular among little wizards to buy owls as pets now, and owls are indeed more helpful to little wizards than cats, so she recommends Jerry to buy owls. However, if Jerry chooses a cat as a pet, she will be very happy. I prefer cats. Jerry shrugged and laughed. Okay, then we need to go to the magic zoo later, there are no other pets in this store except owls. Professor McGonagall gave a rare smile, and then took Jerry to Mrs. Magic Gold's robe shop opposite the owl shop. You go in and try on clothes first, I'll go next door and buy books for you, and then we'll go to the magic zoo ahead to buy pets. No problem. Jerry nodded and walked straight into Mrs. Magic Gold's robe shop. What a brave little guy. McGonagall saw that Jerry showed no cowardice except curiosity in this strange environment, and he didn't even hesitate to go to the store to try on clothes alone, so he couldn't help sighing secretly. Are you going to buy a Hogwarts school uniform, my dear? As soon as Jerry opened the door and walked into the store, a short and fat witch greeted him with a big smile. Yes, I need three sets of plain wizard robes, a plain peaked hat for daytime use, a pair of dragonhide protective gloves, and a black silver buttoned cloak for winter, thank you. Facing the inquiry from the chunky witch, Jerry politely said one by one according to the requirements he had seen on the parchment. Oh, don't worry, we have a lot of them here. To be honest, there is a little girl trying clothes here right now. The chubby witch smiled and pointed to the back of the shop. Jerry followed the chubby witch's fingers to see a little girl with thick, unkempt brown curly hair and a pair of rabbit-like front teeth was standing on the footstool. 
A witch next to her was pinning up her black robe and measuring something with a measuring tape. Hey, did you go to Hogwarts too? When Jerry stood on the footstool next to him and was also put on a black robe by the witch and began to measure, the little girl next to him asked him in a somewhat domineering tone. Yes, I am a freshman this year. Jerry smiled. If Jerry was an 11-year-old boy, he would be a little offended if a girl his age spoke to him in an aggressive tone. But in fact, Jerry's previous life plus the 11 years after time travel, he is already an old man in his early 40s according to his age. So when he saw a little girl talking to him in a domineering tone, he only felt that the little girl was quite cute. Me too, no one in my family knows magic, so when I got the offer I was utterly surprised, but also delighted, because, I mean, it's the best school I know. Magic school. The little girl seemed a bit talkative, so she chatted with Jerry while she was standing on the footstool and couldn't move. It seems that you know quite a lot. Jerry complimented him very cooperatively. The little girl raised her chin proudly. Of course, when that Professor McGonagall came to my house yesterday, I asked a lot of questions, and I have decided to memorize all the textbooks before the school starts, and I will definitely become the wizard with the best grades by then. Oh, that's for sure. I can tell at a glance that you are not an ordinary person. You will definitely become an excellent wizard in the future. Come on. Jerry stretched out his hand from under the black robe, gave Xiao Gunian a thumbs up, and said with a smile in his heart. What a funny little girl. Hermione, is your place all right? We've got everything except the textbooks now. At this moment, the store door was pushed open, and a middle-aged couple walked into the house with a trolley, shouting to the little girl who was chatting with Jerry. Make friends, my name is Hermione Granger. Hermione took the initiative to extend her right hand to Jerry. She felt that the little boy in front of her was different from the other classmates she had met before, and seemed to fit her very well. Jerry Carmen. Hearing Hermione's introduction, Jerry froze for a moment, then smiled and reached out to shake her hand. Jerry, I'm going to buy textbooks, see you when school starts. Hermione returned to her parents, waved to Jerry, and left Madame Malkin's robe shop. See you at the beginning of school. When Hermione's family left completely, Jerry's face showed a puzzled expression. Does Hermione have big front teeth and thick, curly brown hair? This seemed a bit different from the image in the movies he had seen. He remembered that Hermione in the movie had no front teeth and was very beautiful. But speaking of it, if the little girl he met just now had her hair done and her front teeth straightened, she should be pretty too. After all, the little girl has big eyes, and her facial features are actually Jo Jung, but she doesn't know how to dress up and her image is ruined by her front teeth. It's ready, dear. Ten minutes later, the chunky Mrs. Malkin also came to Jerry with a bag containing Hogwarts uniforms. Okay thank you. Jerry paid the fee, put the clothes into the suitcase, pulled the trolley and opened the door, and walked out of Mrs. Malkin's robe store. Professor McGonagall. As soon as he went out, Jerry saw Professor McGonagall walking towards him carrying a bag of magic books, and waved quickly. Okay, now only pets and wands are left. Ollivander's wand shop is at the end of Diagon Alley, so let's go to the magic zoo first. Putting the magic book into the suitcase, Professor McGonagall took Jerry in the trolley and continued to walk along the streets of Diagon Alley. When passing by Florin's cold drinks, I also bought Jerry a barley ice cream, an ice cream that can taste a hundred different flavors. That's Gringotts Bank, a wizarding bank run by goblins. If you need to store valuables in the future, you can also come to this bank. It's still very safe, er, probably. Professor McGonagall watched Jerry set his eyes on the tall white building on the right, and patiently explained to him. But halfway through the explanation, she suddenly remembered the theft of Gringotts yesterday, and her tone was no longer so sure. Jerry nodded in understanding. In fact, he wasn't looking at the bank just now, but just looking at the two goblins standing guard at the door of the bank, and lamenting how ugly the goblins in this world are. By the way, Mr. Carmen, I want to warn you seriously, if you come to Diagon Alley alone in the future, please remember not to go to that alley. At this moment, Professor McGonagall suddenly looked serious and pointed to a narrow and dark alley opposite Gringotts. That is, Jerry's heart moved, and he already had a guess. Professor McGonagall replied with a straight face. 
That's Nocturne Alley, you just need to know that it's a dangerous alley for you. Okay, I remembered. Jerry nodded seriously. In his opinion, Professor McGonagall may be the kind of person with a knife mouth and a bean curd heart. Although he looks serious most of the time, he is not inferior to anyone in Hogwarts in terms of caring for little wizards, a professor. Seeing that Jerry was so sensible, Professor McGonagall looked relaxed, and led him to continue walking in the direction of the magic zoo. The magic zoo is located between the bouncing and frolicking magic joke shop and Gringotts. The store is not big, but there are many kinds of pets in it. As soon as Jerry stepped into the shop, he saw densely packed iron cages hanging on the entire wall. There's a big purple toad gorging on dead blowflies, a frighteningly big turtle with a shell on its back that glistens like a jewel, a white rabbit that can turn into a satin top hat at any time, and all kinds of stuff. Color cats, mice and ravens and more. Professor McGonagall, you are here, what do you need? A young witch with thick black glasses saw Professor McGonagall at the door, and immediately greeted her with a respectful tone. Pavla, I'm bringing the first graders over to buy a school pet. A small smile appeared on Professor McGonagall's face. How is it, is the work going well? Very good, the boss treats me well, what kind of pet does the little guy like, I can give you a 20% discount. The young witch helped her eyes, lowered her head and smiled and asked Jerry. Ma'am, I want a cat. Jerry scanned the entire store with his eyes, and soon found his target. Look at this gray short-haired cat, it's very docile and very suitable as a pet. Hearing this, the young witch immediately picked out the best-looking British shorts and placed them in front of Jerry. Jerry glanced at it and shook his head, then pointed at the big-faced yellow cat lying on the cage at the top of the wall and said. I like that type of cat. The cat he remembered from Hermione seemed to be a long-haired yellow cat, and the one in the entire shop that qualified now was the one he was referring to now. Crookshanks. A look of surprise appeared on the young witch's face. Because of his appearance, Crookshanks has been in the store for several years and no one wants it. She didn't expect Jerry to fall in love with him at a glance. Yes, I think it's ugly and cute, very cute. Jerry opened his eyes and replied nonsense. That's really great. I've been worrying that it won't find a good owner. I hope you can take good care of it in the future. Pavla used to be a student of Hufflepuff at Hogwarts. Because she liked magical animals, she worked as a clerk in the magical animal store in Diagon Alley after graduation. She was happy that Crookshanks was bought by Jerry not because another business was done, but because Crookshanks had found an owner who liked it. I will try my best to take good care of it, although it is my first time to keep a pet. There was a hint of sincerity in Jerry's tone. After leaving Magic Zoo, Jerry hugged Crookshanks who was snoring in his arms, and followed Professor McGonagall to the last shop at the end of Diagon Alley. That is Ollivander's wand shop, which has been making professional wands for thousands of years. The process of choosing a wand is the same as in the movie, that is, the boss takes a measuring tape and measures it at him, and then starts to try the wand. During the process, there was nothing different from ordinary people, just like ordinary little wizards. After all, what he exchanged was normal wizard blood. After trying two or three wands, Jerry quickly found one that worked better. Alder, dragon's heart nerve, 11 inches long, you must be a helpful little wizard. Looking at the wand waving in Jerry's hand, Ollivander explained with a smile. Alder is an inflexible wood, but I've found that its ideal owner is neither obstinate nor obstinate, but rather helpful, caring, and lovable wizards. Helpful. Hearing Ollivander's explanation, Jerry looked at the wand in his hand with a strange expression on his expression. After leaving Ollivander's wand shop, it was already noon. Professor McGonagall paid to take Jerry and Crookshanks to lunch at the Leaky Cauldron, and then they went to the streets of Diagon Alley again. Get smaller quickly. Jerry watched as Professor McGonagall took out his wand and pointed at the large suitcase and small trolley. A blue magic light flashed, and the full suitcase and small trolley became only the size of a palm. Okay, we should go back. Professor McGonagall picked up the large suitcase and small trolley, pocketed it, and stretched out his arm. Good. Jerry froze for a moment, then understood immediately, grabbing Professor McGonagall's outstretched arm. The follower appears. With a wave of the wand, Professor McGonagall and Jerry disappeared from the streets of Diagon Alley. Magic, what a magical power. 
Looking at the familiar orphanage room, Jerry couldn't help but sigh with emotion. Don't be envious. After you graduate from Hogwarts, you can easily cast these spells. Of course, the premise is that you study hard. Professor McGonagall took the large suitcase and small trolley out of his pocket and said to Jerry after lifting the spell of reducing size. I will. Jerry put Crookshanks down and nodded with a serious expression. Of course he will study magic well, because the world he lives in is not a very safe world, and magic is the only power he can master now that can protect himself. In order to survive, he had to devote 200% of his energy to learning magic no matter what. This is your ticket to Hogwarts. On September 1st, at King's Cross Station, it's on the ticket. Your dean will drive you there by then. I've already agreed with him in advance. When the time comes, you will pay attention. Compared to Hagrid who threw a ticket to Harry and rushed away, Professor McGonagall was much more careful. He not only told the director of the orphanage to send Jerry, but also told him that when he took the Hogwarts Express, there might be I talked to him about some of the problems. After a while, Jerry smiled and assured Professor McGonagall. Professor, I have already remembered, don't worry, I will take the Hogwarts Express train to school on time. Professor McGonagall nodded. Then see you at the beginning of school, and Mr. Carmen, I think you are very suitable for Gryffindor. After leaving the last sentence, Professor McGonagall waved his wand, apparated, and disappeared in place. The Reckless College Seeing Professor McGonagall disappear, Jerry couldn't help showing a embarrassed look on his face. In fact, when he first knew that this was the world of Harry Potter, Gryffindor and Slytherin were the first to be ruled out, and when Claw was the first choice, followed by Hufflepuff. After all, his original purpose was to learn magic and improve himself in this world with peace of mind. And Gryffindor is a group of reckless people who are good at things, and they are the first to cause trouble. Slytherin has serious class conflicts, and he was born as an orphan and he is not easy to mix. Neither of the two colleges could allow him to study with peace of mind. In terms of the learning atmosphere, Ravenclaw, who uses intelligence and intelligence as the selection criteria for students, is definitely the best. They are all academic masters. If you can't get Law and Keluo, it's good to get Hufflepuff. The little wizards of Hufflepuff are generally honest and kind, at least they won't interfere with his study. However, now Professor McGonagall seems to appreciate him and wants him to go to Gryffindor, and he can earn a little star in this world, so Gryffindor seems to be considered. Forget it, there is still a month left before the branch, so let's learn a few magic spells first, so that we can deal with the car robbers and then think about it slowly. After hesitating for a while, he decided to put this question aside, and the most important thing now is to learn magic by himself. Excitedly opened the big suitcase, and took out the bag containing the textbooks, Jerry began to take out the magic books one by one and put them on the bed. Standard spells, beginners, a history of magic, the theory of magic, a beginner's guide to transfiguration, a thousand magical herbs and fungi, magic potions and potions, fantastic beasts and where to find them in the dark arts. A guide to self-defense consists of eight volumes. There is only one month before his return, so some textbooks that are not helpful in combat can be discarded first. After some thinking, Jerry put the four books, A History of Magic, A Thousand Magical Herbs and Mushrooms, Magic Potions and Potions, and Where to Find Fantastic Beasts, back into the book bag. History of Magic is about the history of the magic world, which can only be read as an increase in knowledge, and, A Thousand Magical Herbs and Mushrooms, is an introduction to various herbs. Magic Potions and Potions, is very useful. Powerful potions can play an auxiliary role in battle, but in a month, he can't teach himself how to configure potions, and he doesn't have the materials to make powerful potions. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, a book explaining all kinds of magical creatures, if he goes out for adventures in the future, he may use it, but forget it now. With, standard spells, elementary, magic theory, beginner's guide to transfiguration, and, black magic, a guide to self-defense, Jerry left, magic theory, alone, and put the other three together first. On the table. For a magic novice, Jerry feels that he must first know what magic is and how it works before he can learn related spells. And, Magic Theory, a book explaining basic theories, is what he needs to study most now. Seriously picking up, 
magic theory, and sitting on the chair, Jerry took a deep breath and slowly turned the first page. To tamper with the deepest secrets at will, the source of life, the essence of self, must be prepared to suffer the most extreme and dangerous consequences. Wolfland's Basic Rule of Magic, First Rule. Quote, Four hours later, Jerry closed, magic theory, rubbed his temples, and couldn't help sighing. Hermione Granger, you are worthy of being a master of the generation, she is really amazing. Originally, Jerry thought that he was also a person who had gone through the college entrance examination, and his learning ability was not bad in all aspects, and he had lived for more than 40 years, so his life experience was not insignificant. He should be able to handle the most basic magic theory. But the truth is a slap in the face. As a completely unfamiliar knowledge system, without the guidance of a teacher, Jerry taught himself for four hours, feeling as if he was reading a Bible. It's like a mortal who suddenly got a secret book that can cultivate into an immortal. Without the guidance of a master, it is as difficult to comprehend every word by himself. That's why he sighed when he thought that Hermione, an 11-year-old girl, had learned most of her first-year magic before school started without any guidance. Maybe Hermione was just that kind of prodigy and genius in the field of magic, and he was just a normal human being. I just hope that little red star's refreshing function can be more powerful, otherwise it will be troublesome. According to the introduction on the panel, little red star can not only allow him to experience life in the magical world of Harry Potter, but also enable the refreshing function, which is to let his brain learn, understand and remember, are all strengthened. Of course, the specific extent to which it can be strengthened is not detailed on the panel, and he needs to experience it himself to be sure. Now, he felt that if he relied on his own ability to learn, even if he complained of 200% energy, it would take a month to barely learn the simplest magic. Therefore, if you want to have a good fighting ability before returning, it is very important to consume the refreshing function activated by Little Red Star. Gulu. After rubbing his growling stomach, Jerry looked at the already dark sky. He thought he could wait until he finished his dinner, and then try the refreshing function of Little Red Star. Crookshanks, let's go to dinner. Standing up from the chair, Jerry was about to invite his first pet, Crookshanks, to have dinner with him, but he found that Crookshanks, who was sleeping soundly on the bed, had long since disappeared. Ah, wouldn't this be running away? Under the bed, in the box, in the cupboard, he searched around the house but couldn't find Crookshanks, Jerry couldn't help scratching his head helplessly. Speaking of which, he just read the book too seriously, and he didn't pay much attention to what happened around him. Huh. At this moment, Jerry suddenly felt a cool wind blowing into his neck from behind, which made him shiver. Looking back slowly, I saw Crookshanks standing outside the window at some point, very cleverly pulled the window out of a gap with his claws, then got in through the gap, and closed the window sill tightly with his claws. The cool breeze just came when Crookshanks opened the window. Meow. Crookshanks excitedly ran up to Jerry, put the thing in his mouth on the ground, and pushed it in front of Jerry with his paws. It's like saying, I am your master today. This is the food that the master rewarded you. Eat it quickly. Crookshanks, I, thank you. Jerry looked at the dead mouse pushed to his feet, and the corner of his mouth twitched slightly. No wonder the witch said that Crookshanks was so easy to feed that she didn't even bother to prepare food for him. After dinner, Jerry sat down at the desk again and reopened, magic theory. Use little red star. After clicking on the refreshing function on the panel, Jerry gasped instantly. He only felt a cool air, which suddenly poured directly into his brain from Baihui Acupoint. The brain, which had become more and more sluggish due to a busy day, immediately returned to its best state after the infusion of this cool air. He now feels like he sleeps deeply for 8 or 9 hours at night, and wakes up in the morning with a cold drink. The mind is very clear, and the brain is abnormally active. Lowering his head and starting to study, magic theory, again, Jerry only felt that the obscure knowledge of magic theory in the afternoon suddenly became easier. It seems that the original high number calculus, after using the refreshing function of little red star, becomes a linear equation in one variable, and the difficulty is instantly reduced by several levels. Or, to be more precise, his brain comprehension ability and learning and memory ability have improved several levels, 
so the difficult calculus has become as simple as a one-dimensional equation in his eyes. With the refreshing blessing, Jerry's speed of reading, magic theory, was much faster. Originally, it took more than four hours in the afternoon, and he barely managed to read four or five pages, and he still couldn't fully understand it. But now, under the blessing of refreshing the mind, he has read a quarter of the book, Magic Theory, in just one hour, and he has almost completely understood it. Stop. Four hours later, when Jerry finished reading the entire Magic Theory and remembered his understanding, he temporarily turned off the refreshing function on the panel. Without the blessing of refreshing the mind, his brain returned to a normal state again, and at the same time, a strong sense of fatigue also hit him. It seems that using the refreshing function not only consumes the little red star, but also overdraws the brain power. It seems that I will buy a few boxes of six walnuts in the future. At this time, Jerry realized that although the refreshing function is powerful, it is not a small burden on his body. He hurriedly closed the book, got up and lay down on the bed, and within two seconds, he fell into the deepest sleep. Next morning, when the first ray of sunlight hit Jerry's face through the window, he slowly opened his eyes. After a night of deep sleep, the brain returned to its normal state again. Next time I can't use it for so long at once. I used it for the first time yesterday, because the refreshing state was so wonderful that he couldn't help but turn it on for four hours. Although he read and understood the entire magic theory in one go, it also overwhelmed his brain and he fell into a deep sleep mode after barely persisting for a long time. Therefore, it is obviously unwise to turn on the refreshing function for a long time. The overuse of the brain will make his body instinctively enter deep sleep, because deep sleep can better restore his brain. But in deep sleep, even if there is thunder outside, he will not have any reaction, which means that he will have no vigilance at all in that situation. In case of danger, it is a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. Opening the panel, Jerry checked the number of little red stars he had consumed after turning on, refreshing. 240. In other words, one little red star is consumed every minute. Last night, the refreshing function was turned on for a total of four hours, consuming 240 little red stars, which is equivalent to consuming one little red star every minute. On the whole, it's okay, but it didn't surprise him too much. There were a total of 1,005 little red stars on his panel before, but 240 were consumed yesterday, and there are 765 left. In conversion, the refreshing function can be turned on for nearly 13 hours. According to the previous magic theory, which took about 4 hours to master, the remaining 3 books are Standard Spells, Elementary, Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration, and Dark Magic, A Guide to Self-Defense. It can be read quickly in about 13 hours. That is to say, his current number of little red stars should barely allow him to complete his original one-month study plan ahead of schedule in the next two or three days by indirectly relying on the acceleration function of improving the brain. Five days later, Jerry held the wand in his hand, pointed at the wooden door of the room a little nervously, and whispered a spell. Allahu hole is open. A weak magical power slowly flowed out of Jerry's body along with Jerry's spell and spiritual power, and then entered the wand along his arm. After being magnified by the wand, it turned into a blue magic ray and shot out, precisely hitting the wooden door. The door is locked. Ka ka ka. The wooden door, which was originally locked, opened automatically after a mechanical vibration under the action of Jerry's unlocking spell. Huh, it's finally a success. Seeing the successful casting of the unlocking charm, Jerry heaved a long sigh of relief. In fact, two days ago, he indirectly activated the function of boosting the brain and slowly read all the magic knowledge and spells in the four magic books and memorize them in his mind. But just reading and understanding the theoretical knowledge in the magic book does not mean that you can successfully cast the corresponding magic. Although the spells that appear in these books are the most basic and simplest spells. According to Jerry's understanding of combining the contents of the four books, the reason why wizards can cast magic is because they have the special blood of wizards in their bodies, and they are born with a magical power called magic power. And magic is based on this power, transforming it through spells and spiritual power, and producing various magical effects. 
If you want to cast a spell successfully, you must first have magic in your body, which is why muggles and squibs cannot cast magic even if they know the spell. In addition to magic, you'll need a wand. The wand is like an amplifier and stabilizer. It can amplify and stabilize the magic power you output, so that you can cast magic better. If there is no magic wand, it is not impossible to cast magic, but it requires the wizard himself to have strong enough magic power and a strong ability to control magic. And different wands have different magnification and stabilization effects. The more suitable your wand is, the easier it is to reduce the difficulty and increase the power when casting magic. A wand that is not suitable for you will not only make it more difficult to cast spells, but may even be impossible to use at all. In addition to the wand, in order to successfully release a magic, you must have a certain theoretical basis for magic, and have a clear understanding of the magic you want to release. Every word of the mantra must be pronounced clearly and accurately, and the rhythm of chanting the mantra must also fully meet the requirements. Standard spells, elementary, mentioned that a wizard named Barufeo, because of inaccurate pronunciation when chanting the spell, said, F, instead of, S, and found himself lying on the floor on the chest stands of bison. Therefore, if you want to cast the spell correctly, you must practice, and keep practicing. The more you practice, the more you will naturally be able to accurately cast the corresponding spell. Of course, some spells are more difficult. If you want to cast them successfully, you will need some more complicated skills. These skills books may not be mentioned in the book. You need a professional teacher to guide you to learn them slowly. After two days of practice, Jerry finally found some skills today, and successfully cast the first spell unlocking spell. With the first success, his practice will become more and more smooth in the future. I believe that it will not be long before he can master all the spells in the first grade textbook. Ten days later, Jerry kept practicing various spells in the room with a wand in his hand. The spells learned in the first grade are basically relatively simple spells that don't consume much mana. Even with the magic power in Jerry's body today, it can be easily used, but the power must be much worse. Among the four magic books, or should be said to be three, the book, Magic Theory, only has theoretical knowledge explanations, and a total of 14 magic spells are recorded, which are Soften, Cut, Unlock, Levitate, Lock, Repair, Transfigure, Restore, Snot, Fire, Repel, Smoke, Wand Light, and Wand Extinguishing. Among them, except for the transformation spell, Jerry is not very good at using it, and the other spells can basically be regarded as proficient. However, among the 14 spells, except for the Cutting Curse and the Fire Curse, which are considered a little offensive, the other spells do not have much offensive effect. And the most important thing is that with his current magic power, the Cutting Curse cast can't even cut the clothes completely, and the Flame Curse can emit a small flame at most, which is similar to a lighter. Originally, Jerry thought that in those few magic books, there would be the kind of body-binding spell recorded, which was the kind of spell that Hermione immobilized Neville in the movie. Because in terms of practicality in combat, the spell actually feels the best. If he knew how to bind the whole body, he would give each of those robbers a, all petrification, when he went back, wouldn't it be easy to handle it? It turned out that the spell was not recorded in the first grade textbook. The body binding charm might have been something Hermione taught herself from some grimoire in the library, or it might be a spell from a senior textbook. No wonder Ron and Harry looked dazed when they saw Hermione cast that spell. Thinking about it, although the two of them are scumbags, there are a total of more than a dozen spells taught in the first grade textbooks. It is impossible for them to know nothing about it, and it is already the end of the semester at that time. Unless there was no such spell in the textbook at all, so the two of them showed that they didn't know when they saw Hermione cast it. However, even these spells in the first grade have no offensive power, but they are magical magic after all, and Jerry feels that if they are used well, they may not be unable to produce unexpected effects. But just to be on the safe side, he felt that he needed to experiment with the power of these magic combinations before returning. Similarly, he can also get some little red stars by the way, his little red stars have all been exhausted. He remembered that it seemed that little wizards could not perform magic outside of school, otherwise they would be monitored by the Ministry of Magic. But it seems that little wizards before entering school are not included in this regulation. 
In the movie, Hermione seems to have said on the train that she tried to release magic several times at home before school started, and they all succeeded. Therefore, during the period before entering Hogwarts, he was free to cast magic, as long as he was not caught head on by the Ministry of Magic. Come to think of it, that chance should be very small. There were not many wizards in the first place, and the orphanage he lived in was not in the urban area of London. But in a small town in Surrey, so it was not a big problem to be careful. Ten o'clock in the evening in the small town of Winton, Edward Orphanage. Crookshanks, Dad is going out. Don't run around at home. Jerry picked up his wand, put on some black clothes, said something to a long-haired ginger cat lying on the ground, entertaining himself with its big fluffy tail, opened the window, and got out. Jerry's room was on the second floor of the orphanage, but with his skill, the second floor was not a problem at all. He jumped down easily just by using the window sill on the first floor. In fact, many children are better at climbing than adults, especially Jerry is a child with eight-pack abs, and his strength is not inferior to that of ordinary seventeen or eighteen-year-old boys. The orphanage was already pitch black at ten o'clock. Jerry walked through the front yard in the dark. Quickly climbed over the big iron gate and left the orphanage. I chose to experiment with magic at night to earn little red stars, considering that my actions at night are not easy to be discovered, and many crimes generally occur at night. Fluorescent flickering, taking out the wand from his arms, Jerry whispered a spell, and the tip of the wand suddenly emitted a bright light, which was as bright as a flashlight. The wand lighting charm is one of the simplest of the fourteen spells that Jerry has learned. However, when he was learning this spell, he saw that there is an advanced version of this spell. Once used, the brightness is comparable to that of a small sun, and it is generally used in small worlds to replace the sun. This made him think of Newt's suitcase in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them in his previous life. Maybe the sun in the small world inside the suitcase was made with the advanced spell of this spell. Therefore. Jerry feels that the basic spells he is learning now should not be underestimated. Many subsequent powerful spells may be created on the basis of these low-level spells. The Edward Orphanage is located in the south of the town, which is a relatively remote location. Jerry took a wand to illuminate and walked for nearly twenty minutes before arriving at the center of the town. Unlike the orphanage where all the staff have fallen asleep, there are still many small shops open in the town at ten o'clock. Especially near the bars in the town, and there are many well-dressed men and women coming in and out. In Jerry's impression, crimes are more likely to occur near the bars at midnight, so he has been patrolling around the bars with his wand, and especially turns around those dark alleys with few people. Unfortunately, he has been patrolling until one o'clock in the morning, and he has not encountered even a single crime. It is just that when he first entered the town. He encountered an old couple who were walking at night. Accidentally slipped and fell. It's two o'clock. The little red star. Reluctantly, he could only go back to the orphanage to sleep and plan to attack again the next day. Facts have proved that the world of Harry Potter is still different from the world of Marvel, especially in a small town where life is not stressful. It is really not easy to encounter a crime. Go out at ten o'clock every night and return at one o'clock in the morning. It wasn't until the night before the comeback that Jerry finally encountered a small robbery. It was half past eleven in a dark alley in the small town of Winton. A young white-collar woman who came home late due to overtime was blocked by a strong white man with a fruit knife. And this scene happened to be caught by Jerry, who was patrolling around. However, he did not immediately appear to rescue the white-collar worker, but hid at the exit of the alley, watching the strong man quietly. After he succeeded, he took the stolen money and necklace in one hand and the fruit knife in the other, and rushed ran towards the alley. Flavin, taking out his wand, Jerry aimed at a puddle of water at the exit of the alley and threw a transfiguration charm. The weather in London is rainy and foggy, and water beaches left by rain can often be seen on the ground. Hit by the magical light of the transfiguration curse, the large puddle of water instantly turned into super lubricating oil. And the strong man who fled in a hurry stepped on the puddle of lubricating oil as soon as he left the alley. Ouch! With a slip of his foot, the strong man flew out because of his high speed and fell hard to the ground. Among the fourteen spells that Jerry learned, the transfiguration spell is the most difficult. 
Other magics generally add certain properties to a certain substance, while the transfiguration spell completely changes one substance into another. Also, it can be distinguished from all spells and listed as a discipline, and its esoteric level can be imagined. However, not all transformations are so difficult in the beginner transfiguration charm. It is mentioned in the book that if you want to increase the success rate of the transformation spell, you should pay attention to a few points during the transformation. First of all, it is easier to transform the same substance, such as turning water into wine and water into oil, which can be easily mastered by young wizards who have just entered the first grade. As a counter example, if water is turned into stone and steel, it will be extremely difficult. However, converting non living things into living things and converting living things into non living things is not too difficult a problem, but that requires some learning about conversion spells. The second is that the smaller the thing, the easier it is to transform successfully, such as transforming a match into a needle and hair into a thread. Conversely, it would be very difficult to turn a match into a spear or a telephone pole. Finally, the simpler the structure, the easier it is to transform successfully. For example, turning a mouse into a snuffbox and a rabbit into a slipper can be done by a first and second year wizard. For example, if you turn an owl into a telescope, it is very difficult, even many fifth grade wizards cannot do it, let alone change a plane, a cannon, a machine gun, even Dumbledore may not be able to change it. These are still basic, such as more in-depth transfiguration also involves Gamp's transfiguration law, cross-species transfiguration, human transfiguration, etc., so he needs to go to school to learn slowly. Smokey. Taking advantage of the moment when the strong man got up before he fell down, Jerry immediately threw a smoke spell. Immediately, the area around the strong man was enveloped in a puff of smoke, and Jerry rushed into the smoke like a little cheetah. The strong man on the ground was still in a dazed state of being thrown, but he seemed to sense the presence of a figure in front of him, and quickly grabbed the fruit knife that fell on the ground. Get soft fast. However, Jerry's reaction speed was faster, a softening spell was thrown on the fruit knife, and the fruit knife instantly went limp like noodles. Little dragon wagging its tail. After getting rid of the biggest threat to himself, Jerry mercilessly kicked the head of the strong man who was about to stand up with a whip kick with all his strength. Jerry's strength was no worse than that of an ordinary 16 or 17 year old boy. He kicked the strong man's temple with all his strength, and immediately knocked him out. Under normal circumstances, even if Jerry is proficient in Jeet Kune Do and has 8 pack abs, he is definitely not the opponent of the strong white man in front of him, and the opponent is still holding a knife. In his previous life, Jerry had seen a certain news report that a certain fighting champion met a certain knife-wielding gangster. After a fight, the fighting champion was stabbed to the hospital, and the knife-wielding gangster escaped uninjured. Fighting skills are generally available only when the physical conditions of the two parties are similar. If the conditions are too different, unless you have the mentality of killing the opponent and hit the opponent's vitals with every move, it will be difficult to win. And if one person is empty-handed and the other holds a knife, no matter how good the fighting skills are, it is better to run away. Although it is not impossible to win the white blade with empty hands, it is more likely that the white knife goes in and the red knife goes out. Therefore, at this time, Jerry easily solved a strong man holding a knife with only a few low-level magic that did no direct damage. It can be seen that the effect of using magic as an unconventional power is still very significant. However, it is not denied that Jerry's sneak attack also has a part of the advantage. After kicking the robber unconscious, he didn't leave immediately. Instead, he took out two banknotes from the scattered banknotes and put them in his pockets before leaving the scene calmly. It's not his style to do good deeds without expecting anything in return. Although two banknotes are not much to him, he has always told himself that it is okay to do good deeds, but there must be rewards. Since he helped the lady get rid of the robber and snatched back the wallet, he had to take out two banknotes as a reward, otherwise he was afraid that he would really become a little girl because of earning little red stars and doing good deeds in the future. A Madonna-like figure. That was something he absolutely didn't want to see. After living for more than 40 years, he knows what to do to make his life better. In his new life, he doesn't seek great wealth and power, but he also doesn't want to become a wronged species who only cares for others in the future. 
A person's life is only a hundred years, and sometimes being selfish is not a big mistake. What's more, as long as his strange panel does good deeds, there will be little red stars, and even if he regrets immediately after doing good deeds, there will be no problem. That is to say, if he goes to save the life of another person, there will be a little red star in his account, and if he kills the person after saving, the little red star will not disappear. It's so unintelligent. Not long after Jerry left, the young white collar woman in the alley poked her head out timidly. Just now she heard screams outside, but out of caution, she didn't come out immediately. At this time, when she saw the strong man who had fainted on the ground not far from the entrance of the alley, she was first surprised and then overjoyed. Approaching slowly, she confirmed that the strong man who robbed her seemed to have passed out. She immediately took back her cash and necklace jewelry, then kicked the strong man twice before leaving with her buttocks twisted in high heels up. She didn't choose to call the police. Since the money and jewelry were brought back, although two pieces were missing, it didn't matter. One thing more is worse than one thing less. September 1, 1991. Jerry got up early and prepared all the things he needed to bring to Hogwarts. Today was the first day he went to Hogwarts to start learning magic, and it was also the last day of his one-month experience period. Countdown to homecoming begins. 10, 9, 8, 7. Watching the countdown to return on the panel, Jerry took a long breath and then tightly held the wand in his hand. 3, 2, 1, start returning. As the countdown ended, he once again felt the state where the whole world was frozen, and then his eyes went dark, and he lost all consciousness. When he opened his eyes again, he had already returned to the hijacked school bus. At the same time, the arrogant laughter of the two robbers and the continuous shooting of, bang bang, sounded in the ears. Fortunately, the wand followed. Jerry didn't care about the two robbers next to him, but immediately looked down at the wand in his right hand. What he was most worried about before was that he would not be able to bring the wand back after returning. Without the assistance of a magic wand, it would be basically impossible for him to cast magic, with a failure rate as high as 99%. Now it's time to see how to deal with these four gangsters safely. Gripping his wand tightly, Jerry squinted and scanned the entire interior of the school bus. In fact, before returning, he was already thinking about how to deal with these four armed robbers safely. With the help of magic, it is not too difficult to solve the problem of these robbers. He had already experimented last night. But how to ensure that the robbers do not accidentally injure other children in the school bus is the most difficult. Therefore, his plan is to wait and see what happens and see if there is any turning point. If there is no turning point, he will forcefully act. Although it is possible to accidentally injure some people, the first thing to ensure is the safety of myself and my sister. For the rest, he can only say sorry. It would be best if the robbers left the school bus with the stolen money after getting rid of the police car, so he wouldn't have to take any more risks. As for Little Red Star, as long as he does good deeds, he can get it. In the future, when he learns magic well, there will be more opportunities, so there is no need to take risks. Smith, were out of the way of the cops. The two robbers next to Jerry saw that the last police car was also forced to stop under their crazy shooting, and they laughed and reported to the robber who was pointing a pistol at teacher Bailey in the middle of the school bus. The robber who pointed the gun at Mrs. Bell should be the leader of the four robbers. Hearing the reports from the two robbers behind him, he turned his head and asked the robber who was controlling the driver Paul. Are you there yet? Smith, soon. The robber in front looked at the road sign in front of the car and replied with a smile. About 20 minutes later, under the command of the robbers in front, the school bus was parked on the side of a secluded road. What do we do now, do we want to kill them all? The two robbers at the rear of the car walked towards the leader of the robbers named Smith. Jerry raised the wand in his hand immediately upon hearing this. If the robber intends to kill everyone in the car, then he can only risk it. Idiot, why kill them all, do you think we didn't die fast enough? The robber named Smith kicked the proposing robber in the ass. He knew very well that if he just robbed a small bank, it would cause a sensation, but it wasn't too serious, after all, it was only the bank that lost. And the money they robbed was nothing more than a drop in the bucket in the bank. But if a carload of elementary school students are killed, it will definitely cause a sensation in this society.
They will become the targets of everyone shouting and beating them, and it is even possible that the country will dispatch troops to deal with them. That's why he scolded his subordinate as a brainless idiot. Smith, I think it's fine to take one as a hostage just in case, let the others go, it's a burden to carry. The robber in front obviously understood what the boss was thinking, and made a more pertinent suggestion. Smith thought for a moment, then nodded, and then chose from a carload of children. Seeing this, Teacher Bailey, who was pointed at by Smith, raised her hand tremblingly. Use me as a hostage, they are still children, once they start crying with you, it's hard to coax them. Teacher Bailey was stuttering, obviously she was also very scared at this time. The driver over there, Paul, sat on the seat and lowered his head a little bit. He still has children, a wife and parents to support. Even though he felt guilty, he was unwilling to make such a move. Well, it makes sense. Obviously, Smith was persuaded by Mrs. Bell's words. If you bring a child, you don't have to worry about the other party's resistance, but if they start crying, it will be very troublesome. After all, they are used as hostages to prevent them from being targeted by the police. It is not good to kill them directly. Smith, I think that's a great offer. The two robbers at the back looked at Teacher Bailey's fairly regular facial features and uneven figure, and suddenly showed a malicious smile. Teacher Bell trembled when she saw this, but she didn't say anything in the end, and stood up beside Smith honestly. Hey, Jerry, who had been sitting in the back observing the situation, couldn't help but sighed, and then slowly stood up from his seat. I think it's most suitable for you to use me as a hostage. My father is the sheriff of Queens, and he may have directed the follow-up pursuit. Moreover, I am just a child, without the slightest ability to resist, and I am very obedient. Teacher Bailey is a very responsible and caring teacher, Jerry doesn't want her to fall into the hands of a few robbers. The point is, he followed the robbers away, so he didn't have to worry about the future, and he could do whatever he wanted, so at this moment, he stood up proactively. Jerry, what are you talking about? Sit down and let Mr. Paul take you home later. Bell's expression changed immediately when she saw Jerry get up. Jerry is a well-known good student in the school. He is not only among the best in grades, but also excellent in character and learning. He is also a student she likes very much. At this moment, seeing Jerry get up to take himself as a hostage, he was moved and anxious at the same time. On the contrary, when that Smith heard that Jerry turned out to be the son of the sheriff, he immediately turned his head and looked over. Having a sheriff's son as a hostage must have made the police more fearful than an ordinary elementary school teacher, and compared to an adult woman with the ability to resist, a child is obviously safer. Bring him here. Smith gave instructions to the robbers on the side. Smith, I think this woman is more suitable. The robber bulged his mouth, apparently he had other ideas. Smith knows his subordinates very well, and he just kicked them up. I have money, but what woman doesn't have it, quickly take that sheriff's child with me, we hurry up and get out. Big brother. Aisha watched the robber walking towards her big brother Jerry, and realized that something was wrong, and grabbed Jerry's hand with some fear. Although she is a little middle school and has a lot of nerves, she is not stupid. At this time, she has realized that once the big brother is taken away, something bad may happen. Aisha, big brother is going to send these little demons back to hell, and he will be back in a while, you have to listen to teacher Bailey. Don't worry, big brother is a demon lord. Jerry put Aisha's hand down, winked at her, and walked towards the robber. Little fool, be honest with me on the way, or don't blame me for blowing your head off. When getting off the school bus, the robber just kicked Jerry's ass angrily, but he leapt forward to dodge it skillfully. When the robber wanted to make another kick, he was scolded by the boss Smith behind him. After the four robbers took Jerry off the school bus, they blew up all four tires of the school bus with rifles, and then walked into the small woods on the side of the road. Not long after they walked, they came to a black off-road vehicle that had been prepared in advance. It seems that we have already prepared. Jerry sat in the back row of the off-road vehicle and was sandwiched between two strong men and robbers. He sighed inwardly. The off-road vehicle started, and after a few twists and turns in the small woods, it appeared on a very hidden path, and after driving for a while, it entered the main road, submerged in the traffic flow and disappeared. 
An hour later, in front of a dilapidated warehouse in the suburbs, a black off-road vehicle slowly stopped. The four robbers carried a large bag of dollars robbed from the bank and escorted Jerry into the warehouse. Crack. Jerry looked at the wooden door locked by the robbers, and murmured secretly. It seems that I don't intend to keep alive, so don't blame me. Just after he entered the warehouse, he saw the four robbers taking off their masks at the same time. At that time, he knew that the four robbers might have subconsciously set the same fate for him in their hearts. It's just that the hearts of the four robbers are still filled with the joy of successfully escaping from the hunt and grabbing a lot of money. But when he reacts, it is estimated that it will be his death. As the saying goes, it is better to strike first, and to suffer later. If you don't strike at this time, when will it be? Hearing the laughter of the four robbers outside because of a large bag of dollars, Jerry knew that now was the time when the four robbers were least vigilant, and it was also the best time for him to act. Flavov. Pulling out his wand stuck in his trousers, Jerry first cast a transfiguration charm on a broken chair leg he found in the house. Turned it into a sharp dagger. With the current level of his transformation curse, this dagger should be able to last for about 10 minutes, which is barely enough. Allahu hole is open. The wand pointed at the locked wooden door, and the door was unlocked. With the wand in his left hand and the dagger in his right, Jerry carefully pushed open the wooden door and lurked outside. The dilapidated warehouse piled up a lot of useless garbage, and it also gave Jerry a lot of bunkers to hide in. In the middle of the warehouse, the four gangsters were happily drinking beer while counting the cash in the big bag, obviously in the happy stage of sorting. Use little red star. Jerry did not cast a spell on the four gangsters, but first turned on the panels, refreshing, function. After going to the town to do good deeds every night, and stopping a robbery in the last night, his little red stars have successfully accumulated to more than 50. There are more than 50 tablets, and the refreshing function can be activated for at least 50 minutes. Why do you need to turn on the refreshing function before the battle? That's because after many experiments, Jerry discovered that this refreshing function is actually to stimulate the potential of his brain in a short period of time and keep his brain in a highly active state. In this state, since it can be used to speed up the learning of magic knowledge, of course it can also be used in battle. When used in studies, one can greatly improve one's comprehension, memory, and analysis abilities, and when used in combat, the highly strengthened brain can be used to open the shackles of the body and liberate the body. This state of using the brain to liberate the body, Jerry calls it, Superman form. He had seen a movie called, Super Body, in his previous life, in which the heroine's body and brain were developed beyond the limit because of a drug. In the end, it became an omniscient and omnipotent existence like a god. Of course, Jerry's superhuman state is not that exaggerated, but it can also allow his body to be nearly 100% liberated under the control of the brain. We all know that it is difficult for ordinary people who have not been trained to coordinate their muscles and exert their body strength to the extreme. But those martial artists who have undergone long-term training can use the same body to erupt with greater strength through subtle control of muscles. Jerry's current superhuman state is like transforming from an amateur martial arts enthusiast to a master level martial artist in an instant. The body is still this body, but at this time in the Superman state, both his strength and speed are much stronger than normal. Coupled with a high-end brain, his five senses have also been improved. With the cooperation, his combat effectiveness can even soar several levels. However, this state is not without side effects, and the longer it is turned on, the greater the side effects. The first is the brain. After stopping the function of boosting the brain, his brain will become very sluggish due to the overdraft potential, and he especially wants to sleep. If it is used for too long, the overdraft is serious, and it will even go directly into a deep sleep state, just like the last time he read for four hours continuously. And if the body uses the enhanced brain to release the superhuman state after turning on the boosting and refreshing function and performs body movements beyond the routine, then the body muscles will become abnormally sore afterwards and it will take a period of rest to relieve it. Excessive use, he guessed that there may be a large area of muscle strain after the event. So the opening of this superhuman form is either to make a quick decision as much as possible, or to make sure that he is in a completely safe environment when the end is over. 
Otherwise, it would be dangerous. The smoke screen is lingering. Raising the wand in his hand, he pointed at the four people who were counting the money, and a beam of magic light shot out, and the entire center of the warehouse was suddenly enveloped in a puff of smoke. Smoke bombs. No, those policemen are chasing you. When he noticed smoke suddenly rising from his side, the robber leader Smith's first reaction was to be found by the police. So in a hurry, he asked his subordinates to pick up the rifles placed beside them, and started shooting towards the warehouse door and windows, while retreating towards the interior of the warehouse. At this time, Jerry also kicked his legs, and rushed towards the four robbers shrouded in smoke like a cheetah. In the Superman state, Jerry's speed was very fast, comparable to those of world-class sprinters. In less than three seconds, he crossed a distance of nearly 20 meters and came to the first gangster in the smoke screen. The gangster was none other than the brawny guy who got off the school bus and tried to kick his ass. It's not too late for a gentleman to take revenge for 10 years, but it's never too late for a villain to take revenge. Obviously, Jerry is not a gentleman. Jumping up, the dagger in his hand slashed across the strong man's neck. Stab. Blood gushed out, and the strong man subconsciously covered his neck, wanting to exhale, but found that his originally strong body had become weak and weak due to blood loss. Perhaps aware of the situation behind, the other three robbers held guns at the same time and turned around. Get soft fast. Raising his wand in his left hand, Jerry cast a softening spell on the rifle of the robber furthest from him. Actually, it's better time to throw a transformation spell at this time, but with his current level of magic, it's okay to transform a small dagger, but there is a high probability that he will not succeed in transforming the entire rifle. And the softening spell can make the rifle unable to shoot normally as long as it softens the barrel of the rifle. Go you. While throwing the softening spell, his right hand was not idle, and he threw the dagger directly in the direction of another gangster who was closest to him. Because he was in a Superman state, the dagger he threw was fast and accurate, comparable to those masters of hidden weapons in movies. What? With a scream, the dagger was precisely inserted into the robber's right eye frame, deep into the brain. At this time, Jerry's sixth sense also began to frantically warn him. Because the robber leader who was not far from him had already raised his rifle and aimed it at his head. His legs exerted strength in an instant, and he retreated with a sliding step. Relying on the advantage of his short body, when he successfully shot the first bullet in the robber's head, he retreated dangerously to the place where he had killed him and hadn't fallen to the ground. Behind the first strong man. Fight back at full speed. Jerry pointed the wand in his left hand at the back of the first strong man. With years of experience in playing, angry birds, in his previous life, coupled with the calibration of his super brain at this time, he burst out all his magic power and cast a repelling spell. The magic light shot down the magic wand on the back of the first strong man, with a string of blood gushing from his neck, the first strong man immediately turned into a big red bird, smashed hard on the body of the robber leader. It was the first time for Smith to experience what it was like to be hit by a volley from a strong man who weighed nearly 200 pounds. As a result, he was directly knocked to the ground, then knocked his head on the ground and passed out from serious injuries. Putting away his wand, Jerry rushed towards the robber who was furthest away from him at full speed without saying a word. The repelling curse just now almost exhausted all his few magic powers, and the last robber could only get close to him. At this time, the last robber was still in a state of bewilderment. What's the situation? First there was a smoke bomb, and after a burst of shooting, the police were not found, but the brother behind him was wiped on the neck by a small man first. Just as he was about to shoot at the blurry figure in the smoke, his rifle actually softened like noodles, what the hell. When he came back to his senses, another brother was stabbed in the eye by a dagger, the eldest brother was knocked down to the ground, and the little man in the smoke screen rushed towards him. When he got closer and took a closer look, it turned out to be the little brown-haired boy who was taken off the school bus by them. The robbers were in a daze, but Jerry wasn't in a daze. Relying on his Superman status bonus, he quickly rushed to the last robber. And the last robber also reacted at this time, if he didn't fight back, he might follow in the footsteps of the other three. So the robber immediately threw away the useless rifle in his hand, and raised his hand to reach for the pistol in his waist. Jerry couldn't let the other party draw a gun, 
so he jumped up and pushed a strong knee between the legs of the last robber. Seeing this, the robber stared at him immediately, he didn't dare to draw his gun, and hurriedly shielded his little brother with both hands. But he somewhat misjudged Jerry's strength. At this time, Jerry in the Superman state is weaker than the robber in terms of strength. In addition, the knee was hit with all his strength. Although the robber returned his hands in time to block it, he was still hit by the powerful force. On the balls. He bowed his body like a prawn, and at the same time he took a deep breath, obviously not feeling well. But Jerry didn't stop at the knee after he succeeded. Under the command of the super powerful brain, his arms actually supported the robber's shoulders, and his whole body flew into the air, appearing above the robber's head. The legs wrapped around the robber's neck like a python, and the muscles of the whole body exerted force at the same time, just like twisting a bottle cap, so hard. Crack. The head of the last robber suddenly turned 180 degrees, and he couldn't die anymore. Turning over and jumping down, after looking around to make sure there was no danger, Jerry immediately released the Superman state and turned off the refreshing function. Hiss, this is sour. In just two or three minutes of fighting, the burden on the brain was okay, but I just felt dizzy for a while, and then returned to normal. But maybe the exercise intensity in these two or three minutes was too high, causing his muscles to relax for a moment, as if he hadn't run for many years and suddenly ran five kilometers. It still feels like waking up the next morning after running. But to be honest, the experience in the Superman state is still very good. If it was said that his fighting skills were probably at an amateur level before he opened it, then his fighting skills rose to the top level in an instant after he opened it. After resting for a while to recover his body, Jerry came to the robber who had been stabbed to death with a dagger, pulled out his transformed dagger, and then walked to the leader of the robber named Smith who was knocked out. Without the slightest hesitation, he picked up the dagger and stabbed it into the chest of the robber leader. Cutting the weeds without eradicating the roots, the spring breeze blows and regenerates. He is not so soft-hearted when facing these robbers who obviously have more than one life under their hands. Besides, the leader of the robbers probably saw him in the smoke screen just now, so he must not be allowed to stay. Although it was the first time to kill someone, Jerry didn't feel too uncomfortable other than feeling a little disgusted. Maybe it was because he had already died once before, and he was hit by a large truck. So for death, he is not as afraid as he imagined. Sure enough, it's not the same level, this one is worth it. Opening the strange panel, Jerry found that the number of his little red stars had suddenly increased to 2000, and a look of surprise appeared on his face. 2000 little red stars, that's enough for the amount he accumulated from being a good person and doing good deeds in the past two or three years. But this time, he earned it in one go. It seems that the unskilled good deeds of helping take out the garbage and helping the old lady cross the road are not the slightest difference from killing four robbers who robbed banks with guns and hijacked school buses. Although he earned 2000 little red star points, Jerry didn't immediately enter the small world of Harry Potter. Because every time you come out of the small world, there will be a cooling period, even if there are enough small red stars during the cooling period, you cannot enter again. And after the first experience period, if he wanted to enter the small world, he would need to consume 100 little red stars every day. 2000 little red stars seemed like a lot, but in fact it was only 20 days. Besides, when he was studying magic at Hogwarts, the acceleration function of Little Red Star must also be indispensable. Therefore, what he considered later was how to earn more Little Red Stars, so that he could use them later. After closing the strange panel, Jerry slowly came to the center of the warehouse. At this time, on the table in the middle of the warehouse, apart from bottles of beer, there was a large bag of cash banknotes estimated to be worth a million dollars. Because of the battle just now, many banknotes in the bag were scattered on the ground. Jerry picked up eight or nine of them and stuffed them into his pocket, muttering. Help you get back millions of dollars, seven or eight hundred is not too much, just in time to buy Elsa her favorite ice and snow princess doll. You know, Jerry is only an eleven-year-old kid in this world, and his father doesn't give him much pocket money. Usually he just gets a little from some classmates who like to make things happen. He is very good at controlling violence with violence, but he is only a primary school student, and he doesn't have much in his hands. 
Seven or eight hundred dollars is not much, and the bank will not go to war for these few hundred dollars. Okay, now we are waiting for the rescue of the police. Feeling that the mana had recovered a bit, he used the restoration curse to turn the dagger back into a bench leg, and then returned to the room where he was imprisoned before, locked the wooden door again with a locking spell, and began to lie on the bed in the room with his eyes closed. Stand up. By the way, those policemen can't find this place, right? Probably not, after all, the burst of gunfire just now was quite loud. In fact, not long after Jerry was lying on the bed, a man wearing a gold and red mechanical armor appeared above the warehouse. The time went back to more than an hour ago. Inside Tony Stark's oversized mansion. Sir, there was a bank robbery in Queens. The robber hijacked a school bus full of elementary school students and has escaped from the police. Tony, who was studying the Mark V suitcase style convenient armor, heard Jarvis report, put down the blueprint in his hand, and slowly walked towards the armor wearing platform. Just go out to relax and inspire some inspiration. Since he took the initiative to expose his identity a few days ago, in order to deal with emergencies, he is trying to create a more portable armor, but it is not an easy task to reduce such a large armor to the size of a suitcase. Standing on the armor platform, under the control of the artificial intelligence Jarvis, the Mark IV armor quickly covered Tony's body. The Mark III was severely damaged in the previous battle against the Iron King and was temporarily unusable, so Tony created the Mark IV as a replacement. The functions of Mark IV and Mark III are basically the same, but the appearance has been slightly adjusted. After activating the thrusters on the armor, Tony drove the Mark IV armor, at a speed not lower than that of a fighter jet, and chased after the robbers in the direction where they fled. Jarvis, call all the surveillance cameras and analyze the possible escape routes of the robbers. In the Mark IV armor, Tony gave instructions to the artificial intelligence Jarvis. Yes, sir. As an artificial intelligence, Jarvis was quite efficient, and quickly analyzed and locked the approximate route of the school bus after it escaped from the police car through various monitoring data. After some high-speed flight, under the navigation of Jarvis, it didn't take long for Tony to find the school bus with a blown tire and the teachers and students in the school bus. After learning that the four robbers took a young boy as a hostage into the grove, he used tire marks in the grove and various monitoring on the road to confirm the robbers' vehicle en route again, and successfully found the warehouse where the robbers were hiding. Compared with the police system relying on manpower to monitor and arrest bit by bit, the speed of artificial intelligence Jarvis is obviously much faster. Scan the structure of the warehouse and determine the number of humans inside. Because the robbers were hostages, Tony didn't immediately rush in wearing the armor and shoot them out with a few palm shots. Instead, he used the advanced scanning system in the armor to scan the entire warehouse. Sir, there are five people in the warehouse, four adult human males and one human child. However, now the four adult human males have no signs of life. What? Hearing Jarvis report, Tony had a look of surprise on his face. Boom. A palm cannon opened the door, and Tony walked into the warehouse wearing a battle armor. Who did this? Blood, corpses, and US dollars were scattered all over the place, and needles could be heard quietly in the warehouse. It was obvious that someone had found these robbers before him and killed them all. Oh. The police came here so quickly, which is a bit efficient. Lying on the bed, closing his eyes and resting his mind, Jerry immediately turned over when he heard the loud noise coming from outside. Does this seem unusual? An 11-year-old boy was hijacked here by four ferocious robbers, but he was not afraid at all and had a calm expression on his face, which seemed too unreasonable. After thinking for a while, Jerry took out his wand and said to himself, The flow is endless. A faint magical light shot on his face, and immediately two lines of snot flowed down. This is the snot curse, a spell that can make the snot of the caster flow continuously. Because Jerry specially reduced the amount of magic power when casting the spell, the effect is much weaker. Withdrawing his wand, he rubbed his eyes vigorously again, making the eye sockets turn red, as if he had cried, and his expression was filled with fear and terror. Perfect, a normally hijacked and terrified little boy makes his debut. After a while, the wooden door was violently knocked open, and a tall figure in battle armor walked into the room. Iron Man. At this time, Jerry, who was full of snot, 
looked at the person and couldn't help but exclaimed. He thought it was the police who found here, but he didn't expect Iron Man to come. Oh, yes, it's me, the Super Iron Man, so don't worry, you're safe, come here, I'll take you home. Hearing the comforting voice from the battle armor, Jerry froze for a moment, then wiped his nose, pretending to be naive and said. Iron Man, that's so cool. Yes, very cool, as long as you are obedient, I can consider giving you a small model. Tony didn't take Jerry through the main entrance of the warehouse full of corpses and blood, but raised his hand, directly shot through the wall of the room with the palm cannon, and walked out of the warehouse. Jarvis, contact the police who are still looking for the robbers, and send them the address here and all the records from when we entered to when we left. After ordering Jarvis, Tony picked up Jerry and flew towards the direction of the school bus at low altitude. What's your name? Jerry. Did you hear any strange noises in the room just now? Just some gunshots and shouting. Screaming. Yes, idiot. Okay, needless to say, forget those bad words. Are you really Iron Man? Replacement is fake. Is it true that you said you would give me a set of models? Of course, it will be delivered to your door tomorrow morning. In this way, Jerry may play a normal kid, chatting with Tony without saying a word. Looks like I have to find time to get a broomstick and bring it here. Seeing Tony flying freely in the air in his battle armor, Jerry couldn't help showing envy on his face. People with a free heart all have a dream of flying, especially the kind of flying that is controlled by themselves and freely in the air, and Jerry is no exception. Fortunately, wizards also have their own unique ways of flying. The easiest and most convenient way to fly is a broomstick. An ordinary broomstick, such as the Nimbus 1000, has a speed of about 100 miles per hour, which is equivalent to about 160 kilometers per hour. Better flying broomsticks can reach more than 200 kilometers per hour, such as the Nimbus 2000, and the faster firebolt behind it. When the strength is strong, you can even learn the flying spell and fly as a white light without borrowing any other magical tools. Of course, whether it is a broomstick or a flying spell, its flying speed is definitely not as fast as Tony's steel suit. After all, he heard from his colleagues in his previous life that Tony's steel suit can reach supersonic speed. However, wizards only use broomsticks for short distance flying. For long distance flying, they can use apparition, port keys, and flow powder to reach their destination in an instant. In order to take care of Jerry's safety, Tony didn't fly very fast. It took about an hour to fly to the place where the school bus stopped before. At this time, the location of the school bus has been surrounded by a large number of police officers. When Tony found the school bus, he sent the location of the school bus to the local police station. Jerry, oh, I'm glad you're okay. Almost all the students were sent home under the organization of the police. Only teacher Bailey insisted on staying and waiting for the result of the rescue because she was worried about Jerry's safety. Although Belle is young, only in her 20s, she is a very responsible teacher. On the school bus at that time, she stood up to protect the students and voluntarily became a hostage, which could be seen. And Jerry, as her student, replaced her as a hostage. If she can't confirm Jerry's safety, she will really feel guilty for the rest of her life. Ms. Bailey, I'm fine. I'm fine. As soon as Jerry landed, he was hugged and kissed tightly by the excited Mrs. Bell and he was stunned for a moment, especially Mrs. Bell's heart is still very broad, which made him feel a little bit I'm sorry. Sure enough, children's bodies can always enjoy some special benefits sometimes. Jerry, Jerry. At this time, a familiar voice came from the front. Jerry looked up and saw that it was Aisha who jumped out of a police car with her magic bubble gun, screaming and running towards him. Okay, I'll leave this child to you, I'll go first. Seeing that there were already policemen coming towards him, Tony said hello and immediately turned on the armor and took off. He didn't want to waste his precious time chatting with the police. He happened to come out this trip, and he also had a new inspiration, so he needed to go back quickly to verify it. Thank you, don't forget the model you said. Jerry waved goodbye to Iron Man who flew into the air and reminded him of the model he had promised. Jarvis, I'm a dignified Tony Stark. In the eyes of children outside, is my image that bad? Tony was repeatedly reminded by Jerry that he didn't trust him very much, which hurt his self-esteem. Sir, 
You just sometimes have a bad memory for such things. Jarvis replied tactfully. That's right, then now you control the robotic arm in the laboratory, make a model armor of the same proportion for the boy just now according to his height, and then ask Miss Potts to send it to him tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Seeing Tony Stark disappear completely while driving the armor, Jerry returned to his normal state. Jerry, Jerry, did you send those demons back to hell? Aisha ran to Jerry and asked excitedly. Of course, as a demon lord, what I'm best at is sending them to hell. Jerry smiled and patted Aisha's head when he heard this. Aisha, why are you here alone, dad? Sheriff Haas just received the news, thought you were still at the warehouse, and led the team to the warehouse himself. At this time, Mrs. Bailey, who had already let go of Jerry, explained. It seems that when Iron Man was saving himself just now, he had sent the location of the warehouse to the police station. But it doesn't matter, he paid special attention during the battle just now, and there shouldn't be any traces of him killing a few gangsters. Three of the gangsters died under the dagger, and the dagger, the murder weapon, had already been restored to a bench leg by him, and the last gangster died under his legs without leaving any fingerprints. He also paid special attention during the fight, not getting blood on his body. In fact, there is nothing wrong with leaving fingerprints. He was taken away from the school bus by four gangsters, and all the way to the warehouse. It is impossible that there was no physical contact. The most important thing is that no one would think that an 11-year-old boy with good character and academics could kill four vicious gunmen without injury while being locked in a room. Mr. Bell, I'm a little tired, let's go back to the car and rest for a while. The sequelae of just turning on the Superman state have not fully recovered. Instead of standing here, it is better to find a place to rest for a while. Okay, I'll take you to rest in your father's car. Teacher Bailey nodded quickly, and pulled Elsa and Jerry, who were bouncing around, into the car together. As for the police officers who surrounded him just now, Jerry also knew most of them. They were basically his father's colleagues. Uncle's sister greeted them, which attracted a burst of praise. His previous behavior on the school bus has spread among the police officers, and now all the police officers will praise Jerry when they see Jerry. Some old police officers with children, when they see Jerry, they will think of those brats in their own family for no reason. In contrast, they also let out a long sigh. A round of introversion among children of the same age, Jerry can be called the number one in Queens. At midnight, at 12 o'clock, in a residential building in Queens. Jerry pressed the alarm clock that went off and slowly sat up from the bed. About an hour after returning to the school bus, his father Haas in this world hurried back when he heard that Jerry had been sent back by Iron Man. The four robbers were killed, and almost all the cash in the bank was recovered, so the follow-up matters were not so important. So Sheriff Haas took Jerry and Aisha, and invited Mrs. Bailey to find a high-end restaurant in Queens, and spent a lot of money to celebrate that Jerry was not injured. Among them, Jerry made indirect remarks, and learned from Haas that the police station did not suspect him, but just thought it was some unsung hero with extraordinary skills, who bravely killed four robbers for a righteous cause, then dealt with the traces and left. Of course, this kind of private behavior is not advocated by the police station, and all the traces can be handled so cleanly. Now the police station has reason to believe that this unsung hero may not be so simple. Getting up and getting dressed, wearing a baseball cap, Jerry opened the door carefully, then walked through the living room, quickly left the room with his wand, and came to the elevator of the building. Starting today, he decided to set aside two or three hours every night to earn Little Red Star. Little Red Star can be said to be his most important resource now. To go to the small world needs to consume Little Red Star, to speed up learning magic requires Little Red Star, and to activate Superman state also needs Little Red Star. And the source of the little red stars is to do good deeds, especially to prevent crimes. The bigger the crime, the more little red stars you can get after stopping it. This has been well proved during the day. Lowering the baseball cap on his head, Jerry carefully avoided the building's cameras and security guards and came to the first floor. This is not the end of the 20th century in the world of Harry Potter. In a highly technologically advanced world like Marvel, Monitoring facilities can be said to be all over the streets. If he doesn't want to be discovered by the police or the shield, 
which specializes in special incidents, he must be more careful. The main reason is that he hasn't learned the illusion spell yet, otherwise he wouldn't have to be so careful. Walking on the streets of Queens, Jerry didn't immediately go to areas with high crime rates, but skillfully walked to a shop on a certain street. Lena's Magic House. This is a store that specializes in selling various fairy tale costumes and props to children. It is also Elsa's favorite. Elsa bought several sets of Ice Queen suits and various magic wands from this store. Why is Jerry coming to this store so late? Of course it was because he needed a suit of his own shirt. In reality, there will be no weird phenomena like Superman. Only a pair of glasses can make others unrecognizable. In order not to be recognized by others in the process of earning a little red star, he needs to have a distinctive battle robe that can hide his appearance like all superheroes. What better attire for a serious wizard than wizard robes? Coincidentally, as far as Jerry knows, there are several wizard robes of different colors and styles for sale in this, Lena's magic house. Alahu hole is open. With a finger of the wand, the locked door of the store was instantly opened by the mysterious magical power contained in the unlocking curse. To be honest, if it was only in the ordinary world, Jerry could become the world's top thief with just this unlocking spell, and live a chic life without worrying about food and clothing. It's a pity, this is Marvel, the unlocking spell can't stop the purple sweet potato essence. He opened the door and walked into the store. After searching, Jerry appeared in front of the cash register wearing a black wizard hat, a black mask with only eyes exposed, and a dark loose wizard robe. He took out $200 bills from his pocket, put them on the table, turned around and left. He did not choose to spend money to buy it openly, but chose this way, mainly because he was afraid that his purchase record would be found through the style of the clothes. Although he is a wizard, he is not a backward-minded wizard born and raised in the wizarding world, so he never underestimates the power of technology in this world. In particular, this is the Marvel Universe where some technologies are far beyond modern times. In fact, his Hogwarts school uniform was the best battle robe, but when he returned, he was afraid that the robbers would find something strange, so he only brought back a necessary wand. Closing the door of the shop, Jerry walked in the darkness in a dark wizard robe, heading towards areas with high crime rates. Jerry's father, whose full name is Haas Witt, is a sheriff of the Queen's Police Department, and his daily task is to maintain law and order in Queen's. So is the son of a sheriff, as long as he is a little careful, he still has some impressions of where crime often occurs in Queen's. In fact, the security situation in Queen's is relatively good, and there have been no major problems. There are only a few major cases like this bank robbery. Once he heard his father Haas chatting with his colleagues about the security situation in New York. It has been said that the current highest crime rate is a slum in Manhattan called Hell's Kitchen. Although there are only eight streets there, more crimes occur every day than in the entire New York City combined. However, Jerry does not plan to go there to earn a little red star yet. First of all, it belongs to the Manhattan area, and it is a bit far away from him. There is no suitable means of transportation, and it is quite inconvenient to go back and forth. Secondly, he has only been exposed to magic for a short time now, and the spells he knows are all auxiliary. Although he can use it in a superhuman state, there are also not small side effects. To be honest, going to a place like Hell's Kitchen is quite dangerous. There is no need to take risks at this stage, and it will not be too late to go when the strength is strong in the future. Hey, this is a good start. Jerry hadn't walked far from Lena's magic house when he found something unusual in a small 24-hour supermarket on the street. In fact, it is a small supermarket, but Jerry thinks it would be more appropriate to call it a small shop. At this time, in the small supermarket, a black young man dressed in hip-hop was pointing a pistol at the owner of the small supermarket, an old Chinese woman who was estimated to be close to 60 years old. Hurry up, you yellow-skinned ghost. The old woman was full of anger, but she didn't dare to resist. She put all the turnover of today's cashier in the small supermarket into a small bag and put it on the desk of the cashier. The black young man was obviously a habitual offender, and he didn't even wear a hood on his face, because he knew that as long as the object of robbery was not a white person, generally the problem would not be too big. In particular, the number of robberies he robs each time is not high. 
These Chinese bosses may not necessarily call the police, and even if the police report, the amount involved is not high. Most of the police will deal with it, and they will not try too hard. Some people are like this. They dare not resist those who have hurt them, but they dare to bully those who have been hurt the same as themselves, and they still feel that it is right. However, just as the black youth picked up the bag on the table, which contained scattered bags worth thousands of dollars, and was about to leave, a short figure blocked the door of the small supermarket. "Get out of the way, little fool, or I'll stick your head in your ass." Facing a child who was obviously wearing a strange black wizard robe and playing house with a mask, the black youth was not polite and immediately threatened loudly. Unfortunately, the child in the black wizard robe didn't seem to be frightened, but replied coldly without any panic, "Please put down the bag in your hand. I think you want to court death." Although the black youth didn't dare to shoot and kill people, it is of course no problem to teach the other party a lesson. So he put the money bag in his left hand into his pocket, then raised his hand and pushed it forward vigorously. He wanted to push the little guy who blocked the door to the ground, and then kicked him hard a few times to let him know the dangers of society and let him know that the guy who hasn't even grown his hair should stop meddling in his own business. Don't hurt the child, the old woman at the counter exclaimed when she saw this. He he. Jerry watched the black young man push his hand. And without dodging, he quickly raised his hand and accurately grasped the other's middle finger, and then broke it hard. What? The black young man let out a scream and immediately raised the pistol he had been holding in his right hand and was about to shoot in Jerry's direction. Get soft, fast! Jerry had expected it and raised his wand first and threw a softening spell. Walter, the black youth looked at the pistol in his right hand that was as soft as dough and made an unbelievable sound. Your feet. Without the Superman state, Jerry's strength is not as strong as the opponent's, so naturally he has to attack the opponent's vital points. The black youth who didn't have time to react because the pistol became soft immediately threw away the pistol and knelt down on the ground, covering his balls. Let go of the young man's fingers, and Jerry skillfully struck the neck of the black young man kneeling on the ground with a very silky hand knife, knocking him unconscious. The Superman state consumes the little red star. And there will be side effects afterwards, so he thinks it is better not to open it if it is not necessary. Oh my God! Seeing that Jerry knocked down the robbing black youth to the ground, the old woman couldn't help but exclaimed in Chinese, "Grandma, this is your money!" Jerry took out the money bag from the black young man's arms and threw it on the counter. Then searched through the black young man's pockets, found about dozens of dollars, and put them in his own pocket. These are my rewards, Grandma. You can call the police and arrest this robber. Okay, okay, kid. Thank you. Seeing the strange child in wizard robes turn away, the old woman was taken aback for a moment and immediately thanked him loudly. But when she came back to her senses, she realized that when the little boy in wizard robes talked to her just now, he used very fluent and natural Chinese. Could it be that this little boy is from China like her? Leaving that street. Jerry wore a pitch black wizard robe and walked along some deserted paths to areas with relatively high crime rates nearby. He just spoke Chinese with that Chinese grandma, but he did it on purpose. He needs to earn a little red star to improve his strength, and he will definitely participate in more and more incidents to prevent crimes and disasters in the future. And as his strength improves, these incidents will definitely become bigger and bigger. Sooner or later. He will enter the public, the police, the government, and even the shield. At that time, if someone investigates him carefully again, they will find out that this wizard who can use magical magic, the first time he does something good in public, he speaks fluent and authentic Chinese. People will always believe the answers they have worked so hard to find. The guy who has been speaking in English, wearing a wizard robe, a wizard hat, holding a magic wand. And hiding under the mask, exposed his true identity because of his language when he had no experience in the first operation. Therefore, his real identity is very likely to be a Chinese kid living in New York. You see, this is a perfect way to distract some guys who want to know his true identity. Jerry thinks it is very important to hide his identity because he is not alone. He has a father who loves him and a lovely sister. He will be very powerful in the future, but his family cannot be as powerful as him. Although the two of them had no blood relationship with his body, after all, 
They had lived together for 11 years, so they could be regarded as his only two real relatives in this world. Speaking of which, their family of three is kind of weird. Three people with three surnames, his name is Jerry Carmen, his sister's name is Aisha Hathaway, and his father's name is Haswit. However, although Jerry has no real blood relationship with the two, Elsa and Haas are serious father and daughter. It's just that Aisha's mother passed away due to physical reasons not long after Aisha was born. In order to commemorate his deceased wife, Haas gave his daughter his mother's surname. As for Jerry, his situation is even worse. His parents disappeared when he was born, before the full moon, and no news has been found until now. Haas and his father had a very close relationship. After Jerry's parents disappeared, he took the initiative to take him over and raise him as his own son. This raising is 11 years. So Jerry is still very grateful to Haas. You must know that although he was reborn with memories, he had no ability to protect himself when he was a baby. On the streets of New York at midnight, apart from the homeless, the office workers who work overtime and return late, and the young people who like nightlife, it is rare to see other people. Oh, and of course, there are criminals who love to do their crimes in the dark, of course. And, lurking in the night to fight criminals, superheroes. Thief. Catch the thief. In the silent night, suddenly there was a woman's anxious cry for help. Lucy, a tabloid reporter, had to work a few extra hours tonight because she had to organize material for tomorrow. Unexpectedly, as soon as I got out of the subway, I was accidentally hit by someone. With rich experience, she immediately checked her satchel and found that the satchel had been scratched and the wallet inside had disappeared. So there is this next scene. Although it was discovered in time, how could a professional woman in a suit and high heels run away from a thief who was known for his escape speed? Helpless, she could only call for help, hoping that some kind-hearted person on the side of the road could help stop her. It's a pity that there are not many people on the street at this point, and the only few people just chose to watch with cold eyes. Because no one wants to be stabbed a few times by him when he goes up to stop the thief. Just as Lucy watched the thief's back drift away and was about to disappear in her eyes, a strange smoke suddenly appeared and enveloped the thief. A moment later, when she arrived panting, the smoke suddenly disappeared, leaving only the unconscious thief who stole her wallet and the pink wallet in his hand. It's almost 3 o'clock, we're almost going back. After taking down a street thief again, Jerry checks the time and decides to wrap up his first hunt for the night. Not bad, he cracked down on four crimes in one night. Although they were not big, they earned him close to 200 little red stars. In the middle of the night in New York, there are countless crimes, large and small, visible and invisible. It's just that because Jerry doesn't have a good means of transportation, the current range of activities can only be near the community where he lives. In addition, he lacks a method to quickly find criminal incidents, so the efficiency is not too high. He thinks he is lucky to find four in one night. It's a pity that he doesn't have Superman's ears, and he can hear nearby crimes anytime, anywhere. At 7 o'clock the next morning, Jerry woke up instinctively from sleep. Since he has a certain ability to take care of himself, if there is no accident, Jerry will get up on time at 7 o'clock every day. Over the years, it has become his instinct. Turning over, putting on his clothes and shoes, he opened the door and left the house. Of course, going out early in the morning is not to go to fight for righteousness and earn a little red star, but to run and exercise every morning. The muscles in his body didn't grow out of thin air, they were slowly practiced through various exercises every day, accumulating countless sweats. Good morning, Jerry, back to running. Good morning, Grandpa George. Still in the elevator, Jerry ran into an elderly neighbor who lived next door and liked to take a walk in the morning. For a child who gets up early and goes out for a run at the age of four or five, it's hard not to be impressed. Besides, he will be very polite and help you throw away the trash and pick up things. Kindness, positivity, optimism, politeness, helpfulness, outstanding achievements, love of sports, these labels are the impression Jerry has brought to all the neighbors around these years. It was also a source of distress for many children in the neighborhood, including other children throughout the building. Forty minutes later, Jerry returned home covered in sweat. 10 kilometers in the morning is what he has to do every day now, but because he is not yet an adult, his legs are not long enough, 
and he often earns a little red star on the road, so it will take a little more time. Otherwise, with his current physical fitness, he can run 10 kilometers for nearly 30 minutes. Throwing all the changed clothes into the washing machine, turning on the automatic laundry button, Jerry started his daily morning brushing and taking a shower. Ten minutes later, he changed into his home clothes again, tied on a scarf, and walked into the kitchen. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.